expedition leg on April 7th. So we're a uh, good ways through the uh, expedition NA138, Lu'u'a'ea Ahiki'iki Kumu, um, building off of work that was done in the fall, uh, both mapping and a little bit of exploration. As Christopher said earlier, we are uh, in the Lulukalani Seamount Ridges and uh, have done, at this point, how many dives have we done? I think this is 11, is that not right? 11? Um, we've done, t yeah, 10 or 11. And we uh, actually are back where we started on our first dive. We're diving on King George Seamount, just a different area, uh, before we originally got chased north by the weather. So uh, if you are looking at a map of the Hawaiian Islands, uh, go past the high islands, the main Hawaiian Islands, and keep going northwest, and you're going to see uh, a lot more islands relating to the uh, to the archipelago. And those are the northwestern Hawaiian Islands, much older. Um, a few basalt uh, islands, small islands, still exist. Nihoa and Mokumanamana, but uh, almost everything else is kind of coral atoll or vast coral reef with uh, very low elevation coral sand islands. One of the biggest protected areas on the planet is Papahanao Mokua Camarine National Monument. We are way up at the north edge of the uh, boundary, uh, which is uh, the full economic exclusive zone. So I believe that's 200 nautical miles from the nearest, nearest landmass. So if you find uh, Kawo is one of its names, Kamole is its ancestral Hawaiian name, or Leisan Island, you can kind of head straight north from there and you'll see the little um, kind of two-pronged fork of underwater seamounts, and that's where we are. We had a question come in. Are there any plans to mic the wet lab so we can follow the science there? Um, there is a mic in the wet lab, but it's uh, attached to a box on the wall, so it's probably not going to pick up all the conversation. I think it would be rather difficult for everybody to be wearing headsets while we working in the lab. We also usually keep it muted. Yeah. Too, cha too chaotic? The uh, sound, yeah. sound wise with some. We sort of just use it to communicate with yeah. the van if we need to or with other parts of the ship. Yeah, we use it more like an intercom. The primary yeah. work being done there right now is just uh, packaging the samples so that they can be further analyzed on land anyway. So it, it would be super enlightening to, to listen in. We're not allowed to critique anybody's taste in music, though, if we do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not picking up your voice very well, Rhett. Let me see. Can you hear me now? A little bit better. Hmm. Okay. Weird. So I'll just turn myself up a little bit. I have a question for front row. Are you on SPL? Yeah. Yep. The question is, is there anything special about the hydraulics on the ROVs to work at depth? special not really <laughs> pumps a pump um yeah i Rash. mean everything has to be depth rated of course so there's not going to be any I, I guess that's the only probably big difference is uh something that has to go down to the seafloor can't have any air intru like any air pockets or intrusions anything like this um but yeah i mean everything else works the same as a standard pump would um yeah. Uh, yeah, you sound a lot better. So I guess. Oh, sorry. No, I'm go. Go ahead. I'll go after. Oh no, no. I was about to say. Um, I, I should probably clarify. Most things that we have on the vehicle are, of course, spec for um, deep sea missions. So a lot of the materials um, that you have to look at are going to be specific for high pressure areas, saline environments, etc. Um, so I guess I was being a bit cavalier in saying that a pump's a pump, but the same function is that it, it's um, that we're using these pumps for the vehicles, but we they are, are of course um, specific for marine environments and um, for this kind of extreme environment if you think about it, right? Because we have a saline environment, we have high pressure zones. Um, yeah, so sorry for the backtracking on my answer a little bit, but uh, yeah, 
I guess that's what makes you special. <laughs> <laughs> so it works in an extreme environment. Sorry about that. Just doing a sound check because uh, my settings seem to be playing a little weird. You're very low. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I um, the readout for where it says like vid one copilot everything, it like actually doesn't have any options for me and won't let me adjust anything. Roger. I maybe I can just put you up in my own headset. Nope. That's you are up. Huh. <clears throat> okay. Well, I'm glad that it's at a level where people can at least hear me. So. Yeah. So we've had so many highlights on uh, this expedition leg. Um, mm -hmm. I would recommend, if you're not already there, go to nautiluslive.org and click on the gallery and scroll down and check out some of the nicely edited videos of, of those highlights. There's actually quite a, quite a few on there now. Uh, and if you click see more, uh, the little hyperlink below the ones that pop up, you can see all of them related to our uh, different dives. And I think there's also some other stuff out, complimentary stuff out on the uh, Nautilus Live Instagram and Facebook, including the whale shark that we saw a little two days ago. Yeah. Hey, Rhett, there's a request to take a look at the uh, new addition to the left arm. <laughs> um, that is Let's a question see. for the pilots, yeah. actually. Oh, okay. yeah. As, as, uh, as long as they're okay with seeing a googly eyed <laughs> creature. <laughs> it looks kind of like an elephant. It does. Yeah. I was just thinking that. Like that. Gotta huh. add some big ears. Oh. Like an elephant <laughs> with his hair slicked back. So. <laughs> Can we log that? <laughs> Spot a giant googly eye yeah. on arm. <laughs> Unknown creature. Yeah. <laughs> So Paul's going to have some questions for you Paul. about <laughs> kind of what he had to think about in terms of pressure and depth and all of that um, when he comes on watch, which I think we said was 8 to 12. Yeah. So start pondering. Start pondering. <laughs> yes. uh, I'm excited to learn the physics stuff that he wants to show. We're up to 4.1 meg. Nice. I like that a lot. Yeah, that's very good. I logged it. Now I'm going to do a little walk around the gauges. Raj. So I missed the yellow brick road that. Uh, oh my gosh, it was four to pretty eight. cool. Oh yeah, yeah can you pull I'm that getting up some on questions uh, from Twitter on okay, that. Let's and see I if we can no find idea. some pictures. Yeah, you I've haven't, you haven't I, even I, seen pictures of it? I've seen no, a couple of pictures of it, but I think I was in the lab or something when that was going on, so okay, I would have missed it. Let's see if I can get some. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. I'd love that. I've seen, oh I've my seen gosh. some screenshots on I Twitter. I was downstairs looking at it, and I was the first thing I thought was Yellow Brick Road. Apparently, that's what everyone was calling it up here, it too. It looks exactly like one. I, I have a feeling it has to do with jointing, but I don't really understand uh, what's going on with the uh, with the rock at that spot. Was this last dive? Uh, yeah, kind of kind of later. Sometime during the four to eight watch. Do you remember about what time? I just wanted to know what dive it was. Gotcha. Okay. They didn't get I a sample from that. Here, yellow no. brick, broken crust. Okay. O two thirty five. Let's go there. Let's go to there. All right. Yeah, there's a, a massive amount of data that is collected on these dives. So wrap here. there's yeah. actually a very good kind of organizational and reporting system here so we can keep track of it all. Yep. Our brains aren't meant to handle this much information all at once, so we yeah, have to have a little yeah. bit of technological help. And then that doesn't even count all the uh, annotation of all the all of what we see on these videos. Um, that will be done by uh, graduate students and experts, experts in their fields. Yeah. I still remember in college having to count barnacles. <laughs> My marine bio professor had like little slides in a little slideshow carousel, and he'd just shine it up on the wall, and we'd have to 
count every barnacle in the picture. Right, and there's it, some really good ones. They were slathered with barnacles. So. Like this. <laughs> this is yeah. it. Yeah. Man. It's a very sudden change, oh, too. Wow. It's just like perfect tiles, basically. It's insane. Yeah. So it looks like some sort of a joint pattern, and you very occasionally get joints that intersect at, like two different joint sets that intersect at 90 degrees, basically orthogonal to each other. But um, yeah, I don't exactly understand what the crust is here, because this all looks like a big pile of hyaloclastite, but. Yeah. Um, I don't think this is anything we can share, right, from here? It's like, it's like we glazed over um, or something. I don't think so, unless a computer pulled this up. Uh, this picture up from the drive. Do you have any good ideas, Rhett? I have an uh, No, I don't want to. Maybe. I, I have an idea. Yeah. If we, it's up to Jess, though. If we pulled it up on the sonar computer. Oh, we can pull it up on a different computer, though, Rhett. Like, can we pull it up to PC? What are we trying to do? Sorry. Um, if, if one of the computers that you can broadcast has access to the Nautilus drive, Nautilus FS, then I can d direct you to this image. Uh, that's a good question. I... I am still understanding how to direct the computers uh, in that way. Uh, okay. The other day when we were trying to... Here, here I'll let pull me it up. switch off of SPL. I'll pull it up. Minute. Give me a second. All right. This is for y'all. We don't want you to have to listen to us talking about how cool it is without maybe seeing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because it is one of those things where, um, yeah, it doesn't look... It looks a little out of place in the environment, but I can guarantee you this is not man-made. Unless you have a, you know, unless there's actually some sort of degree in like, not just underwater basket weaving, but underwater basket <laughs> masonry. <laughs> at, de at depth. <laughs> yeah, so I think, so t to my eye, it looks like this is like some sort of like incrustation or something on top of a pile of hyaloclastites and it's, for whatever reason, um, it has structural weaknesses that intersect around 90 degrees, where around it, on, in some other spots, it maybe with more sloping, the break, uh, the fracture patterning is a little bit different. But um, it looks like it's been kind of like slowly weathering and sloughing off of the uh, pile of hyaloclastites that it seems to be part of. Hmm. So I don't know a whole lot about um, hyaloclastite behavior after it's deposited. So, um, yeah, we might be looking at something that's a little uncommon uh, to come across. The question is, you know, what exactly happened here? And that might be a good question for um, a geologist who's uh, pretty well versed in, um, you know, like structure and like rheology mechanics of rocks, um, which is not something I have uh, a ton of background in. So, yeah, if, uh, once we get this picture up, um, if uh, there's anybody with some sort of a uh, structural analysis kind of background, um, that might be an interesting little problem to figure out. We have seen this in some other, like, kind of shallow water conditions here and there, where it it looks like there's just rock that's perfectly tiled. Uh, but, you know, we, we take a closer look, and it actually is indeed completely a natural formation. So. Can you tell how thick those are uh, from that photo? Mm, it doesn't look it, like very thick. It has thick. lasers on in that photo, so... Like depth-wise, thickness-wise? Probably a couple of centimeters thick. It looks like a pretty thin like thing that was encrusting that pile yeah. of uh, volcanoclastic material. But I mean, a lot of the pieces are actually... Did you say you can see the lasers there? Yeah, oh, the lasers I see are right, right in the now. center yeah. there. Yeah, so so some are even in the realm of 30 centimeters, the bigger ones. Oh, yeah, 30 centimeters long? Yeah, yeah long. Uh, I was, I was get, getting a gauge on the thickness of the, uh, like the, the height oh, that, of the Oh, that too, Sorry. I was definitely asking about gotcha, that. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, some of them are pretty big pieces, but I'll bet it's really fragile material, too. This. Uh, it looks like it. Like, you get, like, different grades of hyaloclastite, actually. Um, some of which are pretty pretty well welded and like stuck together and they're you know they're, they're still pretty easy to cut so they're kind of soft rock but um they they uh are pretty well consolidated they hold together you know they they uh they hold up pretty well in storage and then you get some hyaloclastites that are just really like badly cemented and you practically just look at them and they're just like i'm gonna fall apart all over the bench 
and I'm going to make a huge mess for you to clean up. <laughs> so um, that looks a little more on the crumbly side, and I'm guessing whatever this incrustation feature is that's breaking off, it's probably pretty friable. Ah, pretty, it does pretty have fragile. that look. I'll it take does. your word for it. It does. Um, it is, it is interesting, though. We're going to let Christopher break in here when yeah. he has a question. Um, someone was asking what the overall plan for today is. Um, we are currently diving on King George Seamount on the north side. Uh, King George Seamount is a geo, which is a ah, sort of flat, flat-topped seamount. Um, and we're going to be working our way up a pretty steep ridge. Uh, our dive objectives include uh, collecting uh, relatively unaltered rock, uh, rock samples for understanding the origin of the seamount. Um, collecting additional rot samples for examining microbe and mineral content. Uh, collecting water samples for microbial characterization and eDNA studies. And the collection of animal voucher specimens as needed. We expect to uh, see some interesting shallow water diversity, uh, hopefully in a way that we haven't seen before because we're going all the way up to 700 meters of depth. Um, so that is going to be one of our uh, primary objectives that we're we're looking at. Yeah, we're covering a lot of ground on this dive. It's going to be really cool to see not just, you know, how different this is from our other dives, but also how much things change over the course of the dive. Yeah, that, uh, that surveying shallower animal diversity is definitely going to be our focus when we get closer to that 700 meter uh, depth. And that is going to be, based off of the contours of our uh, bathymetry maps, it's going to be steep. So I'm excited to see all of that. Yeah, and then we'll sort of uh, turn a corner, if you will, after that. We'll be uh, on top of the flat portion of the GEO at the very end. I'm really interested to see how, uh, whether or not the lithology changes significantly once we're up that high. You know, the questions are, you know, are we going to stop seeing some lavas? Are we going to start seeing more, like, carbonates or... Like coral reef structures, it might give us some idea of how much this has subsided, or 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 what, you know. You never know till you till you go check it out, right? Well, while we're in the blue water, uh, I always like to share educational resources, so forgive me for those of you who have been on a lot of these dives, but I uh, just wanted to make sure everyone is aware of a, a new collaborative website from uh, the different uh, deep sea exploration organizations, including uh, Ocean Exploration Trust and the EV Nautilus, uh, also Schmidt Ocean Institute with their research vessel Falcor, and of course NOAA and the uh, research vessel Okeanos. And so um, if you go to deeposeaneducation.org, that's all, th those three words are crammed together, you will find a site that is devoted to um, sharing the uh, sharing that exploration with your students or uh, just with, in your own interest in a really nicely organized way that makes it easy to search for different topics or different areas. And you can curate your own um, uh, different kind of folders of different of lessons and images and other things you see in videos that you can share with your students or share with your colleagues. So uh, it's just really came out during after a lot of a lot of hard work just about a year ago now I think. Um, so I'd really encourage you to take a look at that. And then of course it will link you to uh, all three organizations and tell you kind of what each organization's research vessels or exploration vessels are doing at that given time. And you can then go to the specific websites like OET and see all of the amazing educational resources that they have on uh, that we have on that page. So as we mentioned, King George Seamount is a GEO, and the term GEO was um, coined by Harry Hess, who is one of the uh, original uh, folks that started mapping the seafloor. Um, he did that during World War II uh, from his ship using sonar data and 
started seeing some interesting patterns um, that would have explained some plate tectonics things that people had been wondering about. Uh, he named it after a 19th century geographer named Arnold Gio. Uh, Gio. And uh, to be a Gio, you're the tabletop, the flat top, uh, needs to be at least 200 meters below the surface. Yeah. Most Gios that we know about are found in the Pacific Ocean, where we are. Um, but they've been found in the Atlantic and Indian Ocean, uh, not yet in the Arctic Ocean, which yep. doesn't mean that they're not there, but we're still working on getting under the ice. Getting a little better at it lately, though. Yep. And we are in Hawaiian waters, so there is actually a nomenclature uh, group through Papahānau Mukuakea, that uh, Marine National Monument, uh, who have been working hard on developing some um, the Hawaiian terms for these more technical uh, words. So, for example, seamount is Mauna Kai, Kai being ocean. Uh, Agio is uh, Mauna Kai Palahalaha, which describes that kind of flat top. We have a lot more. I know if for those of you who have been on the uh, watch with Malanai, she does a great job of teaching us these words along the way. Sponge is huakai. Yeah, there's also some terminology, uh, some technical terminology in geology that draws from uh, uh, Hawaiian words. So. Two of the more familiar ones are different lava types, like uh, pohoihoi and aa. -a. So pohoihoi is the stuff that kind of, uh, those are the lava flows that have the uh, glassy, kind of wrinkly uh, surfaces on them. And then the aa -a is uh, the lava that kind of uh, flows uh, uh, a little bit, it's a little bit uh, thicker and tends to kind of crumble and fall apart and form these jagged pieces. and. Uh, uh, with the glassy stuff, you, as it's moving, you can hear those kind of tumble and break. So it's it's pretty noisy lava too. Uh, we also have uh, different features and uh, things like you'll see thing, things like this in the lava fields on uh, uh, Big Island, for example. Uh, we have uh, puka, which are uh, basically holes, and then uh, you have uh, kapuka, which is a feature. Uh, that volcanologists use to describe um, little bits of uh, uh, land, sometimes with trees or other vegetation, uh, that are a little bit uphill and they get completely surrounded by uh, lava. For those of you who like to follow uh, Hawaii's volcanology uh, and are aware of the Hawaiian plume or the Hawaiian hotspot, um, it is in addition to erupting and building Hawaii Island, which lived through some of that in the last handful of years. Yes, we have. Uh, it is also building up a, uh, a newer seamount that is uh, was formerly called Loihi and uh, was recently renamed by the Hawaii Board on Geographic Names. Um, actually, July 2021 is when that happened, very recently. Yeah, it was now, and, it was uh, very, and it was even more uh, recently made uh, official on the USGS website. Oh, okay, great. I hadn't heard yeah. that part. And that is Kamaehu Akanaloa. So I'll have to do a little research um, behind the name, but it's, uh, there is uh, a great explanation of that on the HVO website. So we, yeah, let's go pull that up. So, so yeah, they uh, they gave it a name that um, uh, is more descriptive the kind of conditions uh, uh, that Luihi uh, experiences, and now uh, Kamahua Kanaloa, and um, this is an interesting volcano for a number of reasons, partly because it is so young that it's in some of its earliest uh, eruptive stages, something we don't get to see very often uh, with uh, ocean islands fed by hotspots. So it's something we call the pre-shield to early shield stage. And uh, uh, usually these lavas are covered com almost completely by uh, later stages of volcanic activity as the volcanoes grow. So it's, it's a... Um, it's a very valuable place to be uh, 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 to sample occasionally, and uh, 
uh, get some ideas of what, you know, I think some of the youngest seamounts uh, uh, out there uh, are doing and how they built themselves up. Yep. And so while the uh, Papahānau Mokuakea Marine National Monument protects the northwestern Hawaiian Islands, that are the kind of the older uh, islands and atolls at this point of that Hawaiian plume, the one, same ones that are, are building the the new seamount and Hawaii Island, uh, we are exploring Lilikilani uh, Ridge or kind of a series of seamounts. Mm -hmm. And uh, Val, tell us more about what we're why what are we trying to understand there because it's not the same. Uh, volcanic source, right? Right. Yeah, these uh, seamounts that we're looking at today, uh, they uh, intersect, the chain intersects with the uh, Northwest Hawaiian Ridge, but uh, we're pretty sure it's not part, it's not coming from the same uh, uh, mantle plume that Hawaiian volcanoes have. Uh, in fact, we think that um, the volcanoes that we're looking at here are much older than the ones uh, just to the south of us that are part of the Northwest Hawaiian Ridge. And um, these probably, you know, we're not 100% sure uh, where these came from because there are a couple of different uh, hypotheses we can explore uh, as to how they originated, how they came about. Uh, one is that they might be part of some extinct mid-ocean ridge, but um, it's, uh, uh, and if so, those would all, like the entire chain of volcanoes would be about the same, uh, about the same age, meaning they all formed around the same time. Uh, basically getting all generated along a, uh, a ridge system, which you know um, might think of uh, the very famous Mid-Atlantic Ridge uh, as an example of that. But uh, morphologically, they look a little different from uh, what I would expect in a spreading ridge. Uh, and there's uh, some evidence that there might be some very different ages along the, uh, the track as well. So we're gonna, we're gonna get uh, more data on that uh, as a result of this expedition and uh, another one that's going to go out in sometime in the next couple of years. We don't exactly know yet. Um, chemically, there's also some evidence that it might not be a ridge. So some of the field IDs that I've been working on here on the ship, um, uh, I'm seeing textures and uh, some compositional indicators, some mineralogy that it makes these lavas, these volcanoes, uh, more consistent with a plume origin, which is the other hypothesis that we want to explore. Um, and, and in that case, the features that we're, that we're looking for are um, a change in the, uh, the chemistry of these uh, uh, compared to uh, just different chemistry than what we would expect at um, the mid-ocean ridge, both you know, in the major and the trace elements. So it's uh, bulk chemistry, to call it. Uh, you know, what elements and how much of each element are we finding in these? And then also in uh, some of the isotopic compositions of some of the elements that we want to look at. And uh, isotopically, uh, mid-ocean ridges and uh, plumes, um, they, they can look quite different. Uh, but um, yeah, some of the, the some of the mineralogy in the rocks that we've been cutting open is pretty indicative that um, we do have uh, melts more consistent with uh, ocean island basalts that we've studied uh, all over the world. So um, we think that uh, this may be an older part of one of those um, long oceanic hotspot chains uh, and that it may uh, this this chain may link up to a uh, plume that's still active out in the southeastern Pacific and if so that's going to be really interesting because uh, uh, one of the uh, plume candidates uh, is that we've actually been arguing for some time over whether or not uh, the uh, the younger islands uh, uh, that uh, whatever volcanic source is built up there um, it's been debatable whether or not that actually is a plume or if it's some sort of a uh, fracture in the lithosphere because uh, you get this chain of volcanoes that do have an age progression. So what we'd expect from a plume is that the closest you are to um, where the plume location is, the younger the, the, younger the uh, volcanoes and islands get. And you know, there's, there's a, uh, a lot of them do have uh, actually active volcanoes at this youngest end. And then as you move further and further away from that hot spot along the chain, they get progressively older and older and older because uh, the plate keeps moving over this hot spot source that's semi-fixed in the mantle. So we're looking for an age progression. We're looking for distinct chemistry uh, to distinguish between ridge and plume. And we think we're already getting some hints about that, um, which is pretty exciting. But yeah, the potential plume that it matches up to um, is a very young chain of seamounts, all less than about three or five million years. 
their orientation is a little bit funny. It doesn't exactly line up with uh, Pacific uh, plate motion vectors like many of the other uh, active hotspots in the Pacific do. Um, it, it comes close, but it's just like slanted a little bit. So we don't know if, you know, some people have suggested, hey, maybe this isn't a plume origin uh, for these seamounts. Maybe we're looking at some sort of a crack that we're getting a little bit of melt through. Um, cause sometimes plates do crack and do that. Um, but we have some evidence that this comes from a very deep source where we think that plumes come from. We think they come from uh, really deep inside the Earth and potentially uh, coming from places like the core mantle boundary or from uh, transition zones deep within the mantle. Um, so yeah, it, if, if we have a really good case for ages and geochemistry and stuff matching up with the expected motion of uh, one of these plumes in the southeast or one of these uh, eruptive centers of unknown, sometimes, origin, uh, that provides pretty compelling evidence that that hot spot that we're kind of questioning out in the southeast could actually be a long-lived plume, and it just didn't, you know, consistently erupt throughout its history. Some of them are eruptive for a little while, and then they'll, like, quiet down and become non-eruptive, and then it looks like they, you know, something changes within them, and then they start erupting again. So this might be one of those kind of, like, you know, turning on and turning off occasionally, but it's still there. And yeah, we, we've seen that in some dynamic modeling too, where you can get some plumes that for whatever reason just uh, aren't capable of uh, generating the enough melt or uh, you know, some other sort of inhibition, keeping them from uh, erupting and forming chains that we can see in the seafloor bathymetry. So this could be a very complicated plume that we're looking at too in some ways. So and we're excited to learn a lot more about it. So Val, are you saying then that the CMOS that we've been exploring now, which we're assuming are around 75 to 100 million years old, but we'll yeah. know more in a couple of years with the data being processed. Hopefully, hopefully yeah. sooner. <laughs> um, but, th but this hot spot that you're talking about uh, farther south in the Pacific actually was active for that long. And is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, been, it's been long thought that um, the hot spots that we see in the Southern Pacific uh, were probably related to uh, a lot of old Cretaceous volcanoes in the Northern and the Western Pacific. Um, it's just been really hard to trace them because we've been uh, kind of uh, like as we get more information about the seafloor that helps us uh, uh, inform some of our absolute plate motion models for the Pacific plate. Um, but those models, you know, it's it's difficult to get them right because we have to, to account for things that we can't really quantify too much. Uh, you know, we can't like get an absolute reference frame on this planet because you know, everything's moving. What is an absolute? reference frame for this. And that's that's a surprisingly hard thing to do. So um, we base a lot of the plate motion modeling on different lines of evidence that we get from uh, hot spots and volcanoes like these, these uh, intraplate, um, you know, uh, uh, these, these intraplate systems that don't really interact directly with the plates. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they don't always quote unquote see the plates uh, when uh, in uh, how they move and where they uh, where they hang out in the mantle. Um, so there have been, you know, adjustments to these plate motion models over time, and uh, there's there's another and there have been some more, there's been some more recent work on that front, and it's starting to look like hey maybe maybe this uh, maybe some of the more recent improvements in our plate motion modeling are uh, going to help us more definitively link old Cretaceous volcanoes to. Uh, young volcanoes, young active volcanoes that we see on two different sides of the ocean. Hmm. So th these might be remnants of a um, you know, uh, decently large uh, event that a lot of Earth's mantle saw uh, back in the Cretaceous between about 140, 120-ish million years oh, ago. wow. Yeah. It was a busy place back then. The Cretaceous was, uh, <laughs> it didn't just have dinosaurs. It had a lot else going on, too, and uh, uh, geologically, biologically. It, it's a, it's a fascinating period of time to uh, to study, and you well, know, trying to link that to today to better understand what we see today, and you know, perhaps what a very tectonically alive planet will look like in the future too. So Thanks, about we had a, a question about that yellow brick road. If there was a new lava flow that passed over top of the hyaloclastite uh, bed, would it melt the contact? like a glaze and then crack? Is that a possibility? You know, I don't know. Maybe. I think we would, would be more likely to see some of the lava still sitting on top of it, though. 
Uh, we, we saw that kind of contact in other places, especially because that, uh, in the screenshots, it looks like that area was pretty flat. So there would have been some rock that, even if it had completely broken, you know, if the lava flow completely broken up, um, some of it probably still would have stayed there. So um, it's an excellent question. I just uh, don't have an excellent answer. <laughs> Our viewers, one of our viewers said, uh, "Watching our watch is kind of like mystery science theater." Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, it kind of is sometimes. Mystery science theater. Mystery science theater three thousand. So, show where they watch hokey movies and give funny commentary the whole time. <laughs> I'm very glad we can be a source of entertainment for folks. Mm -hmm. We're having fun, and everybody else, I hope, is having fun too. You know? Another viewer has been enjoying watching folks work in the lab and thinks it's funny that one of our scientists likes to wash their hands and then dry it on their jeans because they've gotten scolded for <laughs> doing that before. Um, that's probably me. Um, I don't think it's you. <laughs> based on the description, but I oh, mean, well, you, you so may do it also. <laughs> I, I, I am also doing that occasionally in the lab because, well, those jeans are currently in the laundry. Um, <laughs> but um, sometimes it's just a little more convenient than blowing through a bunch of paper towels. And uh, if I'm gonna wash it anyway, you know, I, I'm, uh, if, if it is me, I'm the rock person. Uh, uh, we don't need those rocks to be particularly sterile. We just need them to be as dry as possible once uh, you know, once we're done working with them so they don't get too stinky sitting in archive. So. Any other fun questions out there, Christopher? There are lots of questions coming in, which is great. Uh, do we have any contingency plans in place in the event of an encounter with an unknown alien species? <laughs> oh, man, that's a cool question. I, I think we get to collect it <laughs> under our permit. So <laughs> For our permit. As long as there are 10 of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Vet Lab has any uh, alien species protocol in place, unfortunately. The thing yeah. is, in this case, we're the aliens. Yeah, we are for the sure. <laughs> we we do on on the other side of this. We do go through a whole inspection, and um, just as part of the permit process to coming out here, it's very important that we're not carrying any alien species that could be introduced into this environment. So, it, just in case you meant it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Gracias. Yeah, there's a, um, in shallower waters, there's actually a, an, an alga right now that is causing some problems in certain areas where we need a lot more um, care as we transmit between the different islands during research. You can learn more about the Chondria tumulosa on the papahanaumokuakea.gov website. It's one of the uh, kind of updates if you scroll through the, that, what are those called? The windows on the home pages that kind of flip across like a little slideshow on a website. You uh -huh. can embed it, something like that. I know what you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, good. The <laughs> carousel of images. Yes, the carousel, I like that. Had a question about sponges, if they can regrow from small pieces, um, do the cells from the stalk and the cells from the head of the stalk sponge work equally well to grow new sponges? I honestly don't know. Um, That's a good question. The, the deep sea, this is not my forte. I'm more familiar with the intertidal zone, and most of the sponges there are just kind of stuck to a rock, like coral around here, um, but don't necessarily have a stem. So. Um, there may be different regeneration and abilities for different groups of sponges. So what I said may not apply to the deep sea sponges. Now that I think about it, we've seen some like pretty big ones that just the whole thing died all at once. That could be for any number of reasons. Let's let's hold on to that question. Maybe when uh, Chris, Dr. Chris Kelly comes on, we could yeah. ask him. It's really interesting. Could you repeat the question? Um, the question was, uh, basically, why don't uh, sponges in the deep ocean, like if they have a stalk and they lose the top, why don't they just grow a new one back? Or mm, if the top falls yeah, off, why doesn't it just grow a new, new stem? 
because we've seen like dead sponges that the whole sponge is right. dead, has died. So. Yeah, I don't know so much about alien containment measures. It's more like geologist containment measures. We do, we do require quite a bit of containing. Let's see, we are at 1,826 meters. We've got just under 800 left to go. Or no, actually 700. We're doing 2,500 yeah, meters, aren't we? So. Yeah. yeah, about I had 26 left. in my head. A question about whether there are uh, Keep poking. Antarctic geos. Antarctic geos. Um, Maybe in the Southern Ocean? Can't think of anything off the top of my head. Um, there, there is a continent there. Um, Beautiful. Oh well, my. I mean, it's not, but it's, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, there are definitely volcanoes mm -hmm. under the ice in Antarctica. There's actually uh, some curiosity is as the ice cap melts, uh, whether or not that decompression will, um, you know, cause a couple of them to go off. Of course, that's that's not anything that would be, um, you know, any sort of danger to uh, living things, but it just might potentially mean some uh, some volcanic eruptions of some sort. Um, as far as geos, like, yeah, I don't know. We'd have to take a look under some of the another jelly um we, we'd have to get a better sense of uh what's under you know some of the uh like continental shelf areas there that are uh that may or may not be covered by ice so we know that i mean we, we do have mount erebus there which is an active volcano um quite active from what i hear and there is a uh what we believe to be a uh, rather remote hot spot or two near uh, Antarctica, but um, not a ton of data on those. There's a little bit, though. So I did a Google search, which did not pull up the answer I was looking for about this question, but yeah, you it know. did pull up that there is a Mount Geo, which is a mountain actually above the surface in the Appalachian Mountains, which is very meta to me. Where was that? I, you're a little quiet. There's a there's a surface mountain like a like a land one which name is Mount Geo that is confusing Google mm. as I'm trying to look this up. Perhaps it's the type locale. No, I'm getting. Um, <laughs> that's very, kind of that's uh, a that's a very creative name. <laughs> it's very meta. I have a question okay. about uh, have any live stream ROV explorations gone to Antarctic waters? Uh, there are expeditions out in the Antarctic. Um, I don't know how often they have telepresence, though. Yeah. I wonder. There's pr definitely some footage from the from the Shackleton endurance expedition recently. There was. That was a big thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, Dwight was talking about uh, earlier in the cruise about some uh, uh, telepresence testing that uh, he was involved with in the Arctic, and. It's a little trickier for ships to get bandwidth at really extreme uh, north or south latitudes because the satellite coverage isn't as good as, um, you know, like in more um, um, like, like around the equator. Yeah, yeah. regions. So um, telepresence would be very tricky to maintain there. But there are expeditions that go out pretty regularly. And uh, that would be a great question for uh, Diane. Oh, yeah. 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 Point, yeah. Yeah. Is Diane on the next watch or the? She Diane is on the next, the next watch. watch yep. So we can pass that along to her uh, in a few hours. There's another question about whether ROVs will be visiting that new Hawaiian island that's being formed that we talked about. Yeah, you know, I was just looking that up, and uh, Kamehua Kanaloa was actually um, visited by EV Nautilus in 2018, I think it was. Yeah, there was an expedition there. So uh, you could actually see a lot of footage if you um, look, if you go to the expe expedition tab on nautiluslive.org and select that uh, 2018. Yeah, uh, it gets visited every now and again and, uh, you know, it gives us an idea of uh, tracking its growth, you know, how things change, uh, get some samples that um, uh, 
a number of us in geochemistry have, uh, have worked on. So, yeah, yeah, I have a colleague who's a PhD student over at uh, Oregon State who's been working on a lot of stuff from, uh, from that volcano. I've got a couple in my lab right now, um, a couple samples from there, and there are uh, all sorts of folks, so, uh, particularly over at uh, University of Hawaii, who've uh, uh, done work on samples from that volcano. So, Jess or Kylie, were either of you on that? Or sue the mine? What? What, what? what number? What was it? What it was, was uh, it? August 23rd to September 12th, 2018. COVID's. I had just gotten off before uh, that one started. Oh. I think it might have been there for that. It sounds really familiar. I remember when they went like and mapped over a recently erupted area. Um, but Dr. I don't remember. Dr. Darlene Lim, Lim, or Lim of NASA. Oh, yeah. Then, yeah. I <laughs> 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 and Dr. Christopher German of Woods Hole. Ocean yeah, Pacific. that was a NASA subsea then. Oh, that's a nice uh, hydrothermal picture. Yes, there. yes, like it a was. Yeah, yeah then the I was after that. It says, yeah. That was after Amelia. That was after Amelia. Was that the same year? Uh, yeah, no, this was an earlier year, I think. This was. Oh, Raj has an eighteen. Raj, Raj got my years yeah. mixed up. Yeah, I was not out for that. When was Amelia? Twenty nineteen. Yes. Yeah. I got right off. I got off right before a Samoan Clipper. It's a beautiful picture. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, because I forgot we were here at all in 2018, because you got went back to California at the end of the season. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like they were doing geologic transects and characterization of submarine volcanic environments, looking at C4 fluid flow and mapping it, looking at the vent fluid geochemical analysis, vent fluid microbial analysis, and plume bio geochemistry mapping and sampling. Sounds like it must have been an interesting one. That would have been, yeah, because you get a look at not just how things have changed since the last time a ship went out there and did some surveying, but also uh, okay. getting a lot of really interesting info out of the hydrothermal and ocean circulatory system. Uh, we've done some of that out in the Lao Basin too, and there's just so much going on. I, I think one of the interesting things too about that, that trip for subsea at least was that they had also an anthropologist on board that would study us. Cool. Oh. Um, Ooh, studying the studiers. It's <laughs> very meta. <laughs> but but it, it was it was more um, not necessarily us as individuals, but studying kind of the workflow. And this is kind of an anticipation for um, potential missions in uh, Europa, for instance, and these subsea missions up there. Oh, cool. Um, but you'd have a time delay baked in, so you have like a seven minute time delay. Mm -hmm. And so seeing how kind of group dynamics function under a seven minute time delay between scientists ashore and the operations team mm -hmm. and what that would look like and how that would kind of translate into um, operation protocols. Very cool. So that was, I think, uh, neat. I've never been uh, that really is. thought about that before until subsea. Did you see the... Uh, Sorry? Uh, I mean, it was a bit slower, but um, yeah, it, it, w it, w it didn't actually function too badly. Did I you see the end report? Uh, no, I didn't, no, yeah. <laughs> so oh, maybe, no. maybe there's we some, we some of the things that they teased out of there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we should look that up. 2,000 meters down, 500 to go. Yeah, 15 more minutes. Cool beans. So one of our viewers was has been watching the oxygen saturation as we dropped. Notice that it hit a low point around a thousand meters and then started to rise again as we got deeper. Um, can anybody explain the causes of the oxygen minimum zone in those midwaters? Um, it's the consumption of all the marine snow that you see that we're passing by. Um, just like when we eat food, we need oxygen in order to digest that food or metabolize that food. Um, a lot of the organisms that are in this upper layer will be consuming the oxygen as they consume that food. Um, and so the oxygen gets lower and lower and lower because it's not being, um, it's not being replenished by uh, gas exchange at the surface. Um, but then deeper down there are some currents that bring in uh, waters from elsewhere that have uh, higher oxygen concentrations. I think and it's they're also, also colder and, yeah. and saturation's higher. Metabolisms are probably lower there. Um, 
We've been seeing surprisingly dense life even in the oxygen minimum. Yeah, that so is yeah, yesterday was a good example Especially of that. Fish. I wouldn't yeah. expect it to see fish because they, you know, all their motion, they would need more oxygen. And I think we saw the most fish at the lowest oxygen levels, which is unexpected for me. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. um, a question uh, maybe for Rhett. Um, are either of the ROB ROVs <laughs> equipped with additional light sources in specific spectrums? I don't think you're on SPL. Right. Okay. All right. That's going to answer that in a little bit. The answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> They're just all bright. Yeah, we, we, we our lights are kind of just standard white lights. We don't have like control over the colors unless you buy them different. say hello to Mark, Joe and Emily, Jamie, and uh, someone joining us from Indonesia as well. And all the rest of you out there, thank you for your great questions. Uh, keep them coming. I'll try to get to as many of them as I can, but we'll be on bottom soon and we may have some other conversations going. Somebody wants to know how many of us are going to apply to be on the team that gets to do the first ROV on Europa. <laughs> um, I'd be up for that mission. Yeah, I was just yeah. going to say, if anybody, I could guess Jess. <laughs> for we were, Europa? We were discussing ops, but I wanted to make sure that was, you know, in case NASA's listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, I like my job here, it's good. Well, it's really interesting how they are like preparing to like engineer for it by doing work in the Hadal zone on Earth, uh, which is deeper than 6,000 meters un underwater. Um, and like using that as like a, a basis for getting through some engineering design concepts. Um, and like, yeah. Who he has like a whole ocean worlds mission, um, and some of the people that work on those teams have come out on the Nautilus, uh, including during the the tech demo and things like that. Um, it is so interesting. In fact, like one of the cool things, like one of the guys working on it, um, um, first name Tim, last name is escaping me at this point. But they were having like who he has those like ocean encounters, um, uh, I don't know webinars, um, and they had one like from uh, Batman Tim Timothy Shank. Yes, yes, and he had been in like in Alvin, and they had called the International Space Station. It was like the longest phone call ever. <laughs> Not in time, but by distance. Um, and, and they were both on that, uh, like, Hadal Zone, like, ocean, like uh, ocean Worlds uh, webinar for Ocean Encounters. It was really, really interesting stuff. Interesting, interesting engineering um, uh, challenges to overcome, you know? Because, like, Europa has, what, like, some incredible amount of ice before you get to the water. It's like three miles thick or something. Yeah. Of ice. Like crazy. Yeah, I'm very interested in it. A lot of people are wondering if we're going to run into like specific creatures down there uh, or aliens. I'm not sure what a gaiju is, but somebody oh. wants to know if, if we're going to, what we're going to do when we run into one of those. Make a lot of excited noises. Don't worry, we're not near any uh, tectonic boundaries. Yeah. We'll ask Chris Kelly yeah, if he wants us to here. collect it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't expect to see Cthulhu either. <laughs> if we oh, do, Bell we're going to pull the ROVs. <laughs> <laughs> when we land, are there any samples that you're going to want pretty quickly? Uh, oh, when we get back into port? No, no, sorry, when we hit bottom here. 
Oh, right. Sorry, I wasn't even thinking about that. Um, We're yeah, on the I gotta do a science. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Raj. <laughs> the answer is yes. The answer is yes. yes. <laughs> Although, please don't completely fill bio E. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> that rock is that rock is thirty four pounds from yesterday, and it's gonna get its own box, and it doesn't fit in bags. Oh my god. Not gosh. the bags that we have. Did you cut it? Could you cut no. it? Could you cut it? No. I I probably could, but um, it would be complicated. Is the if anybody could you could? Is the rock saw the best saw for rock sawing things? What I'm wondering is if you put a diamond blade on a sawzall, <laughs> could you overcome the size problem mm. of a rock? I think it would be pretty tricky with a sawzall. Yeah, I guess like you'd keep have it, to keeping put things it in a like aligned and everything. Rod. Yeah. Yeah, because if you like, you have to be careful like that the sample's not moving yeah. while you're cutting it, except for in the direction of the blade, because otherwise, you know, if you get a little twist in there, it's gonna catch on something mm -hmm. and uh, like jam, like, yeah, just jam and stop spinning, which yeah. is, I, I've, I haven't had that happen on this ship yet, thank goodness, mm -hmm. uh, but I have had it happen a couple of times when uh, in past years where like, you know, sample just unexpectedly fractured and it just, uh, you know, comes apart really rapidly. And, oh, no. um, yeah, it makes some pretty horrible noises. Ooh. I've seen where, like, once I was out at sea and got on shift at 8 a.m. once, I uh, went out to the, the garage on the back deck where we had a, uh, a rock saw, kind of a similar size to this one. And I uh, immediately noticed that the blade had a large kink in it. So oh. we had to replace the blade and somebody was probably ramming some rocks through a little too quick. So, yeah, yeah you got to take your time with that stuff. Um, Plus, we'd have to keep running water over the cut, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh so we do right. a cooling, we run a cooling line with all of this, too, that uh, keeps the blade wet, keeps everything cool, um, acts as a little bit of a lubricant to help us cut through the rock, as well as, very importantly, keep the amount of um, dust down. Because, uh, yeah. It, yeah, you don't want to inhale rock dust. Uh, that's a good pathway to uh, silicosis. Rock and wow. also, powdered manganese crust wouldn't be so good for you either. So good point. Good point. Yeah. Um, for bigger rocks, it's it's definitely better to have a bigger saw. But with that, there's a lot more expense quickly getting roped into that. So, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, like a 10 or 11 inch uh, blade um, on a ship that's that's pretty versatile and uh, pretty sturdy. So as long as you're just careful, extremely careful with what you're doing. Um, it's, uh, that, I think that's a pretty workable size for a ship. Okay. I mean, if we need bigger rock saws, we can go back to the mainland. They got big <laughs> rock saws there. Okay. Or I think there's one on Hawaii too, on uh, Oahu, so. So we can always ask around for those if we really needed it. Yeah, I'd be a little nervous to have a bigger one on the ship with all the rolling. Me too, I've not, I've not used a lot of truly huge rock saws. Um, I mean, it's probably mostly the same, but I'd worry a little bit more about the bend, uh, the blade uh, flexing in certain circumstances. Uh, it's much less likely uh, with the with the blade size that we're running right now on the ship. Yeah. So we are almost at 2,300 meters. Uh, when we get to 2,400, I believe, we're going to quiet down and let the pilots and nav kind of figure things out yeah, until they tell us we can... Yeah, until we can talk again. <laughs> yeah. Let me yeah. plow through a few more comments then before we get there. Um, thank you for a great descent from Kansas, where there is no ocean. Rock chalk. <laughs> just chalk just wait a few hundred million years. There will be one again, I think. Uh, you are sitting on top of an ancient rift, though, especially if you're in eastern Kansas. Um, a question about what are practical salinity units when on our feed. Uh, those are um, basically parts of salt per 1,000 parts of water. So it's a measure of concentration. So if you are gonna mix some salt water for a saltwater aquarium or something using the just the bag of salt from the pet store, like you could use that as your uh, ratio. Um, I was asking if there, it's possible to put a current time on our homepage. Hmm. 
I'm not mm. sure about that. Uh, we can talk to our, uh, our tech guys about that. I would ask like current ship's time or something? To reflect UTC. wherever they are in the world. If you look up UTC time, yeah. that is what we are on. Yeah, because we're least, oh God. Uh, up here, but then we're Honolulu time for our daily life. What does it say under more data on the web page? Uh, we're going to go All check right. that out. We've got 80 meters to be really funny or informative. <laughs> oh, um, Raj. Yeah, I don't see see a date it does, does it? say UTC up at the top though at least yeah so I uh, yeah I mean I guess whatever UTC time we are just convert it um. sorry that's not very useful but um, you know yeah because we're kind of switching between both up here yeah so question about how we keep lenses free from marine snow uh, the water does a lot of the job for us when we're under and then uh, we can wipe down the lenses when the ROVs are up on shore. That's something I've seen happen several times on this cruise. We, uh, yep. we clean the lenses before every dive, too, so that mm -hmm. yep. there's no salt buildup. Yeah, salt buildup and gunkiness and all Shmoo. that jazz. Schmoo. Schmoo. Technical term. <laughs> <laughs> I like our technical terms quite a bit. <laughs> so uh, we have a question. Did you all decide at a young age to do what you do, or did you want to do something else? You guys should go back a few days and listen to Kylie's very excellent yes. yeah. uh, description of her pathway. I thought that was yeah. awesome, the way you shared that. Not Thanks. all of us took a direct route here. Um, there at least a few of us in this van have uh, been pretty, pretty roundabout, or yep. you know, just chance. I've been a middle school science teacher for 24 years, high school Whoa. and middle school. That so, doesn't uh, even, you don't even seem old enough for that to be true. <laughs> 48. What? Yeah. No way. Oh really? my God. Yeah. Got young blood, man. Birthday. <laughs> Teaching middle school keeps you young. <laughs> I guess it does, oh, it yeah. It gives me the gray. It's starting to come in right in front of my, right in front of my ears. <laughs> oh, that's how you get over to this, over the wireless. Okay. What was that? I just made something work uh, on my personal computer that I've been trying to figure out this entire cruise, and uh, <laughs> it's the small ones. Yeah, we we uh, might need a slightly different um, um, intranet uh, URL for the Max up on the board. Oh. For the Max. Yeah, because uh, this one here. Has why don't you tell me off as pale? Yeah. Uh, one of our viewers reported that um, if you uh, want the, the time, if you go under more data oh. um, on the main page and look at yeah, wind so, speed, um, the wind speed graph the one has your time. Board. Oh, Roger. Oh. Three beams. Three beams, Roger. 86 meters. Alrighty. 86, Roger. So we are approaching bottom, so we're going to let the pilots focus on what they need to do and the navigator. Yeah, thanks, guys. We'll be down in 81 meters. Hey, my wife is watching. Hey, hon. My wife testifies to my youth and my age. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping you honest, I see. <laughs> We're gonna be on bottom. Yes, we are. I like this part. I like this part. 
It's like the anticipation of, uh, ooh, when do we get to spot the rocks? Yeah, when do we get Whatever to look at something there? that's more than blue? Yeah, textured. Blue right, and I'm gonna snowy. I'm going to stop at six zero meters here. Yeah. My six zero or your six zero? Your six zero. And Rod, Rod. <laughs> um, just change my device. Okay. All right, I'm all stop. Cool. I'm going to turn auto heading on now. Yeah, sure. Raj. And I'll meet you around at like 225. 225, okay. Is it okay if I go now? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I just want to make sure. Oh, sure thing. Do you mind if I hit the dive salvo? Yeah, sure thing. Raj. Cool. I'll take a back deck cam on the other one, Brett. Sure. Thank you. Or 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 the bow, whatever. Okay. An outside one. Do you have any preference? All right. Bow. Thank you. Down we go. Coming down, yeah. Yeah, let's Rush. do it. Looks like there's a little squall on the bow cam. Oh yeah. Good thing we launched. We did. Yeah. Forecast didn't call for chance of flurries today. All right, we got bottom <laughs> in sight. Rajoid. Roger Rama. <laughs> Gotta keep it interesting, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> I keep me on my toes there. <laughs> I see AC floor. down the gains. I don't know why it's auto setting the gains to so high on the sonar. Change the default settings, I guess. But just give me a heads up. Quite a bit sure of thing. Thank, Thank you. Here. Otherwise, I get nervous. Yeah, yeah, that makes <laughs> sense. I'm just switching it off of auto is what happens when it, when it has that dramatic change, but okay. I'll let you know in the future. Thank you. This is good rock territory once we're ready to ready to do stuff. Yeah, I wanna do 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 get up a little bit here. Land right on a wall. Yeah, very slopey, solid. All right, right we'll do a balancing one. Sounds great. Roger. Just let me know, please. Sure thing. Park on the wall. I'm gonna turn off some of my lights. Oh my gosh. Raj, I'm gonna leave. I like that. I like this outcrop. Sampling, a lot of these look stuck together, so. 
We'll see what we'll see what we can find. Huh? Yeah. Interesting. Do do do. Well, we'll do our white balance, I guess, out here. But that's okay. Sure. With you guys, I've come back a bit. Kylie can do the. Okay. Arm. You have craft valve now. Pop out, pop out. Raj, Raj. Confirming that uh, lasers and porch lights are off, too. Lasers are on, so I'll turn those off. Lasers are now off. Can I do it now? Or? Uh, yeah, let me get you a stable position and park myself a little bit. Good afternoon, Asako. Nice to see ya. Okay. All right, you're clear. Go ahead. Raj. Give me a second. Is that correct? Oh, that, that doesn't look correct. Where is the light? <laughs> yeah, a little out, outboard, yeah. I really think a little bit more up. Up. Up and out. Up and up. Up and out. Swing outboard more. And a little bit higher. Uh, yeah, actually, it's, it's more centered. Sorry. And then up higher. Uh, it looks like you had it better down. Right there. Let's do that. Raj. Pan and tilt, man. All right, go ahead and push on in there, please. All right, maybe try framing that guy up a bit there, Kylie. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I am. Let me make sure the iris level is right. That looks more correct. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, gonna. Um, the camera's gonna go black for a moment. Yep, sure thing. Raj. Okay. All right, and now I just got to do the white balance, and then we should be good. Sounds sure thing. good. Wait. Yeah, okay. Mm. Let me try it one more time. Yeah. All right. And then... Okay, I think we're good. Roger okay. that. Full head. And so, Manuel, Kylie gets this puppy stowed. What's going to be the general bearing to our next waypoint? So, the next waypoint will be 195. 195, Raj. Yes. Uh, back row, we're clear to just kind of go straight to waypoint two. Or do you guys want to go along any contours? or? Want to try um, for a rock here? I think, Sorry. yeah, we'd like to try for a couple of rocks. Uh, Beth requested one pretty early, not but I'm yet. not seeing anything uh, that. But in is a second. Can I reset? Yeah. Yeah, I don't see anything we can sample here, so I think it's good to start heading uphill. Um, can we do a speed of 0.2 knots? Would that be okay? Yeah, yeah, especially because it's steeper terrain that would be preferred. Yeah, that'll also give us a chance if we spot something, uh, I think, to uh, uh, go and get it. Okay, sure thing. Yeah. So I'm not seeing anything that looks like loose piles yet, but we'll see something. Great. You don't think these ones here are probably um, encrusted? No. We'll make the steps uh, yeah, third. Those, those are probably Sounds nodules, great. so... Yeah, just bear uh, in mind, we are a little bit on the small up. side. Yeah. Thanks, Suleiman. I'm just going to do the gauges really quick. This Shall is we just a ton Let's of go. fractured Let's pillow go. lava. Bridge, this is now? Yeah. Bearing 195, 30 meters, speed 0 0.2 knots, please. At Atalanta view is wild. It's kind of hard to tell like how steep this slope is. It just looks like a wall. That's from that right. View. Yeah, it looks like just straight up. Big, like, sheer. 
This is like a some sort of a collapse fault plane that we're looking at. You got all these beautiful uh, stacked pillows uh, in cross section. It's a big old rock coming up. That is a big old rock. So we had a question about uh, Argus and whether it is the modern updated version of Argo. Fish. Halosaur, probably. Oh, yeah. Argo look like one. is an ROV that was used uh, by Dr. Ballard in with Jason. I think it's the... Can we look at that fish together. a little I'm to not the sure. <coughs> the little sponge thing? No, there was a fish that just went off screen to the left, just like while we're sitting here for a second. Yeah, I thought I saw right a holothurian too, but I think it's probably just a rock. That guy right there. Uh, maybe a little sponge or something. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Was I right from a distance? What do you think? <laughs> On the fish? <laughs> yeah. What would you say? Halothorian? Hal I mean, sorry. <laughs> Halothorian. Yeah, I'm mixing everything. <laughs> Go ahead and push on. The head looked a little... Looks sort of like it. It looked narrow enough to be... A salty thurian. Oh, it looks different. Oh, actually, yeah. it looks more eel-like. It's not a, not a okay. halothor. No. Oh, shucks, I'm not as good at these. Uh, it did look like one from further away. Is it a cutthroat eel of some kind? That was what I was going to say, but I forget. How do you, where do you see the markings? Cut partial wide, please. That? I think it's the net for ranked. All right, I'm going to go full wide. Sounds good. Um, get myself squared up here. Yeah. I'm sure that those yeah, are Yeah, you're yet. right. That's what it is. I just changed this, Kyle. Good call, Leela. I did, though. I totally was said the same thing as you. It's a nap faux brancaday from a yes. three meter distance there. <laughs> um, so, speaking about Argus, uh, we're actually not using Argus today. We're using a different ROV called Atalanta as our secondary uh, ROV in, in the pair. The reason that we use two ROVs instead of just one, uh, a couple of reasons. One, it gives us a bird's eye view looking down uh, on Hercules. And also, um, it helps to absorb a lot of the uh, heave that the ship is going through. So the heave, the waves are going to move the ship up and down, and that pulls on the cable. That's going to move Atalanta up and down. But then there's a more slack line that goes to Hercules. So in theory, uh, Hercules doesn't get pulled on. Oh, uh, 190 is the next move. Yeah, sorry. Already is. <laughs> Allows Hercules to get this nice still shot that you're looking at right now. Yeah, you're doing the gauges as I get. Do you think? I love this angle. This is such a good like, I know. desktop it's background. Really auto -heading. <laughs> Rhett, can you explain why we do white balance at the beginning of every dive? Yeah, sure. So um, cameras have sensors for color essentially but um, the color of an object is determined by two things it's determined by um, what kind of light that object would absorb uh, in any environment or in white light um, but also it's determined by the light that's hitting the object so if I shine uh, like a pure blue light at an object it's gonna have a different color than if I shined like a white light which invo includes the whole spectrum uh, at it because there are different wavelengths that uh, aren't aren't even available for it to reflect under those circumstances. Um, so uh, essentially the point of a white balance is to tell the camera that in this light environment with this spectrum of light that's available, um, this object is white and you can base all other ca uh, colors on that um, and that'll give you a good readout on um, what the actual uh, color that would be exhibited by that object under standard circumstances is. Thanks. Yep. One of our viewers would love to hear the waves and the wind when we're traveling to different locations. We only really get those at the surface, but... The waves and the wind are quite loud like, when yeah. we're transiting. Yeah. The wind would be very unpleasant to listen to. Yeah, it's not like the kind of calm beach noise. It's the katong katong as it <laughs> impacts the side of the, the hull of the ship. Yeah, yeah, you so get the sound the of the engine, rings. which yeah. isn't as bad as before. Yeah. 
Honestly, ge the generator when we're sitting still is almost worse. <laughs> there is that lovely moment when the ship turns off its engines where everything stops vibrating. Yeah, I yeah. love that moment. Like any time when we're mapping at night and the ship makes a big turn, I'll wake up a little bit because all of a sudden uh, we're moving differently. Yeah. This must be pretty cemented in, maybe. That's what I'm... Because it, it, it would be falling otherwise with how steep the slope right. is, right? Yeah, that's Another why I haven't... Move step, step, please. Yeah, that's why I haven't uh, shattered anything out yet. I'm looking for something a little bit flatter where things may have collected. It's, it's like so little weird. local ledges. How strong that crust can become because a lot of this stuff looks so loose, but I know we spent right. a lot of time last dive trying to pick stuff up. Seems like benthic super glue. <laughs> it's interesting too that all that stayed put for long enough for the crust to form and glue it together, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. well, we must be sitting very close to the angle of repose for these. Yeah, right. I'm thinking it looks like there's some sort of vertical channels that go up that are mostly sediment. Yeah. There's rocks in those. I, the, if those are rocks that have tumbled down and stopped, they might be easier to pick up. Potentially, yeah. But then we also wouldn't we know they were from this depth. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so I'm looking for something that's ideally, it, ideally it looks like it might be near in place. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, see what kind of opportunities come up as we, uh, as we work our way up section. I have a feeling that by our second watch, we're going to be like, this was what the dive started like? I can't <laughs> remember that. It looks so different. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of IO down here, yeah. but I'm sure I'm absolutely sure it'll pick up uh, yeah. over the next few hundred meters up. This is the kind of landscape that plays with my eyes all the time. Oh, I keep yeah, thinking that's I see right. something. Mm -hmm. it's, we really have to look hard because of the the shadows of the rocks and then just that white right. sediment. Oops. There was one rock that we cut open from the deep dive. Um, and you never really know what to expect when you're cutting these open. Um, turns out it was a bunch Sorry. of pieces of lava that broke up and then What's cemented that? each other together with a whole bunch of sediment right in the core. So it's like it's it was a, a gooey nougat rock. Gooey from the nougat, nougat rock. rock. <laughs> huh. It was a nougat nugget. It was. <laughs> Nougat nodule. <laughs> hey, Red, I have a follow-up to the question you just answered. Sure. Um, what is the purpose of the red, green, and blue stripes? How are those used? Um, I actually don't use those, so I'm not 100% sure, but I, I'm uh, in this case, but typically those are on uh, slates for video in general, and they're uh, also used as references to help uh, determine in post-production uh, what you know one color or another looked like at that uh, light environment. Um, practically speaking, I haven't used them uh, in this context, so uh, I couldn't tell you if there's another use uh, here now. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I was born this way. Big rocks. A little too big. Pulling up rocks in places like this makes me think of the sword and the stone. <laughs> like, everybody keeps trying it, and then all of a sudden, somebody will like go grab one. It, it just comes up go. with no problem. You are worthy of this rock. <laughs> yeah, this definitely is a crumbly slope. So they're those look loose. They're quite small. 
approach this is now. Uh, another move, same step, please. We have a question. Have any of our uh, team experienced or played the Subnautica video games? Mm. I've heard of it, but I haven't played it. Ditto. Roger. I also have heard of it and never played it. Kind of hard at the sediment. It was, so. but I've I've turned you way down. Yeah. Thank you. So Val, we have a question about the origin of all this sediment. Where do you think it's coming from? Uh, probably a combination of things. So you get like you, you get um, just a little bit of like silt of some type and some clays uh, can come from maybe a little bit of weathering of some materials but I think there's also some biological uh, Sorry. material in there as well it's just striking that it's so different in color from the rocks it is incredibly fine and incredibly goopy did you get a a sample the other day, or did that not work? A push core? Uh, we have one push core from a few dives ago. Would you? Can we do a quick look right there? It's probably just my eyes in this weird environment. Oh, that's something. Oh. Jess, do you mind if we do a quick snap? Right May here. I have to radio them Oh, directly. yeah. On what? Oh, okay. Is it shadow or is it something? Um, yeah, I, don't, I think it's a question. Or, what were we saying? It's that hairy thing, right? Yeah. So I think it's like sponge picules or something, guys. Do you want me to go further? Yeah, please. Okay, well, I didn't totally make it up. What is this? Sponge picules. Sponge picules. It's a weird yeah. little fuzzball. Definitely. Hey, thank you for looking. Oh, I. about will there be more dives on this expedition? I expect we'll have a few more. Mm, about right. At least one more after this. At least one more. But uh, plans are not 100% finalized. Yeah, could we hold here for Come a second, out. please? It's not listening to me. I, I know. Just pull out. That. There we go. That's cool. Looks I think they said if they toggle uh, one of the buttons, it will stop doing that. You want do you want these okay. samples here, Val? Um, I I am thinking this would be a good place to start looking for samples. Can um, you go ahead and stop the ship, please? Yeah, thank you. Fresh, this is nav hold position. So I think that one looks pretty botryoidal, and that might be an excellent sample for Beth on the right. Yeah, right. yeah, that one on the right looks good. And then there's kind of that angular one near the lasers uh, too. All sorts of angular ones. So we might be able to do a double here yeah. and then pull a niskin once we're out of the sediment. So for those of you who have Botryoidal on the EV Nautilus bingo card, <laughs> check that one out. <laughs> um, Val, do you mind if I move a little bit upslope? It okay. looks like a lot of this is similar. And yeah. then uh, as the vehicles swing, it'll get us some time. Sounds good. Question about UV lighting and whether we've ever turned off the light to look for bioluminescence. I think that has happened in past years, but uh, so far that's not something that we have been doing. Um, yeah, in past years there was a low light camera at some point for looking at that. Oh yeah, this is good. These are some quality rocks. Yeah. What was it, Kylie? You want to get a rock for your friend? <laughs> <laughs> my friend wants a rock. Let's get a rock for Two my friend. Two of your friend. friends want a rock from here. Two of my friends. 
I was like, well, I don't even know why the default wasn't to say like the watch leader wants a rock. I was like, my friend wants a rock. <laughs> <laughs> I am perfectly okay with that. I want to get a rock for my friend. Ooh. Okay, we have some life. Sponge uh -huh. and a Bamboo, coral of some sort. Maybe. Bamboo whip. Signs of life. Uh, uh, okay, this might buy us enough time Okay. around here. So let us yeah. know, maybe see anything in the... Oh yeah, we need to... Porch yeah, it, right here would be good because we're getting into more outcropping it's stuff. So, French. yeah. I'm gonna rack back now. And I will bet this, most of this float is pretty local to this outcrop we're looking at right now. Okay. So this is about perfect. Okay. Hopefully um, we think we'll see. settle out pretty already right here. Yeah, I okay, think I, I saw some stuff around. like a Watch. meter below us. I don't know if we can go backward at all. I don't know if that's feasible. Uh, we can we can pop a little bit below us. Okay. I don't want uh, yeah. Atalanta to come down anymore though. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense loose. on this slope. And like we talked about, I'm tilted see. exactly the same. It's one. Roger. Roger. You want to come full wide on Atalanta, please, play video? Thank you. Ooh, that's gonna... <laughs> the joys of fine silt. Avalanche. Yeah. All right. Could, uh, yeah. Start telestrating. Yeah, anywhere. I am on the lookout. Yeah, any of these angular pieces are gonna be great for me. I'm looking for something that looks a little uh, a little bumpier for, for Bath. Okay. okay. So. Okay. What about these angular bits over here? Uh, right in the center? Yeah. Those look lovely. Okay, start poking. Got it. We are going to poke the ground. What about <laughs> that one? Yeah, that one looks also good. What about that one? Oh, yeah, that nice. one looks really good. Yeah. That one looks beauty. Yeah. Good nice, Kylie. Nice right. shape. Ooh, nice grab. Thank you. Video zoom. Oh, flat, though. I don't know, we'll see. Oh, let's give it a spin. Yes, you shall have spin. Uh, and dust. We shall have silt. <laughs> <laughs> oh We're my getting gosh. a little bit away from it. There uh, nope, there's a rock in there. Um, yeah. You see that reddish? Is it too flat? It's not. How's that? Um, it's a little bit on the flat side, yeah. Kay. Roger. We got plenty of rocks. Come wide. Pull wide. Thank you. Uh, let's pull you back. Uh, I'll keep it inboard until we get closer. You want to get it outside the lens so that it doesn't silt into the lens? Yeah. Raj. There's an answer to the question about nice. the silt Third and the lenses. Yeah. Right here. You live Great. here now. Goodbye. All right. Um, we're let's still swinging see. a little bit, so we'll just try to make one more grab here. Okay. okay. Um, 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 how about that one, maybe? Okay. okay. Go ahead, Kylie. This guy. That one? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Raj. So we are climbing King nice. George Seamount. Seamount is a... That one is... Yes. Ooh, nice. That looks nice. Ooh, I like nice that grab. one a lot. Barely. You're going to shake it out there. Goodbye. Get off. <laughs> Get off. That's silty. Stuff, which number this, this is gonna number will be? It'll be 163. Okay, that's good. One, six, two, three. Okay. One, six, three, push in. Raj, hold that. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Oh, oh wait, sorry. Okay. I wasn't taking pictures yet. I'm going to need to do... All right, I'll get you into fresher, fresher water over here. Okay. Okay. Come wide. Did you get any pictures there, Leela? Uh, yeah, I got some. That's fine. Okay. Kay. Thanks. Um, so, one of the smaller starboards. We're after that. Do you want to do it now or do you want to push ahead? I want to push ahead, but do you guys want to rock for Beth as well? Uh, yeah, if we can. Okay, if we have I'm, time. I'm going to hop up there, sit down real okay. quick. I'm going to hold that right there. Yeah. I will keep looking, and uh, if I spot something, I'll be ready for it. Okay. Right. Perfect. So these seamounts are volcanic structures. Uh, this particular one is called a guillo, which is a flat-topped seamount. Um, and we are looking for rocks. The rocks here. Come up a little there. On the arm? On the winch, sorry. On the winch, yes. The rocks here are uh, volcanic in origin, and they have a 
ferromanganese crust on the outside. So we are collecting cool. them for two different purposes. Yeah. One is for uh, geologic analysis to find out more about the age and history of these seamounts. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. in there. Cucumber. And the other reason is okay. for Let's biological examination. Right. Maybe up in here. What do you think? Here. We may have something here. I'm not really seeing the try to lay stuff, though. Um, Looking at the bacteria that live on these rocks. Once we get a little closer. I think we're in smaller botryoid territory. My gosh, there's such good rocks here, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Huh. We got a beautiful one. Look at how pretty I the one is still in the I arm. Know. You see They're it? So it's right there. Looking, it's though. so pretty. They all do, including <laughs> the sample in the, in the, in the manipulator. <laughs> all right. Even I'm the one with the whole thurian poo on it. Raj, Raj. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm changing our cameras now. That could be a candidate. For your rock sample number two, is that what you're saying? Um, for for Beth. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go crazy early in the dive because this is gonna be a long one. Roger there that. you go. Look at that restraint. Yeah, I know how to work with objectives. I'm just excitable. <laughs> what um, box did you want? Um, we could go for a D. D, Raj. Thanks. Lovely placement. I love that one, but that mm -hmm. one is huge. Try rotating it the why, other way. Why do you like that one so much? Because uh, I can see I've got an index. This is jointing. a challenge, it too. A just let me know. Kylie. Beautiful pillow. Roger. Oh, there's a coral right here, too. I didn't oh. see that. Yeah. If you rotate it the other way, the yeah, there you go. The malt and walks of the body is this side. Awesome. <laughs> so once we bring these rocks up from the bottom up to the ship. Does that look um, good? Yeah, put it a little bit more in the box there. That's looking good. You can butte. Go ahead, drop it there. Before you all move, do, when you're done, oh, do you no. mind if we look at this right here? <laughs> Go ahead and give it a love tap. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's like just too big. Okay. Um, Hold that. Just hold it. Uh, or move the arm a little bit out of that port of that starboard bio cam. Let's see what we got. There you go. Man, I really thought that was smaller. Yeah, same. Try giving it a touch to the back of the butt. Excuse me. Okay. And if that doesn't work, we'll have to uh, put in a different bit. That'll be fine. Good very job. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> Such nice. a light Work. touch. Awesome. Very nice. Val, can you talk a little bit about what you and Beth each do with the rock samples that we bring up from the And then the I bottom? think you're going to keep them in it, Val, or we're going to get one more yeah. sample. Can we get a quick zoom on that, too, whenever Val says? Oh, um, yeah, let's do that after this. After. Sec. I'm yeah. kind of interested in this rock for Beth. I think I'm seeing maybe some botryoidal texture on it. Oh, Sorry. Brett, um, could we get a closer look at that, maybe? Uh, this one here. Uh, which oh, one? Raj. Raj, Raj. Did you see them telestrate? Yeah. Uh, you get there? Yes. Yeah, that one. All right. Go ahead and zoom out on there, please. Hmm. What do, you th what do you think? I think it's on its side, but I think I'm seeing, I think I'm seeing some bumpiness here. I think that looks good. Okay. Shall we pick it up? Yes, please. Roger. Come wide. Is it too big? No, it's not. It might no, be. No, I think that's a pretty good size. Okay, Raj. Oh, 15, 20 centimeters. Ooh, Ooh, careful. No, no. Oh, no. I don't want you. I don't want you. Goodbye. Oh, I didn't even see you there. It's blending yeah. in there. Either. 
Good catch. Good, good job there. Ooh, if it hadn't have moved in the dry, I wouldn't have seen it at all. Okay. I didn't even see it at first. Like Justin pointed it out to me. Yeah, that pink is so close to the silk color with shadow. Yeah. I yeah, think this is going to be a pretty big one. It's loose. It just might be stuck under the other one. Let's just get a better grip. Uh, no. Maybe I want to drive in a bit more here. Garage, garage. All right. Try again. Okay. All right. You're settled. Go ahead. Well, it seems like it's pretty wedged in there. Well, okay, it applies yeah, let's, to let's me try that it's gonna be pretty yeah, big. I don't like it. Yeah, let's try something else in garage. It looks like that rock on top of it is yeah, I hope not letting keep it go. There. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Could move it out of the rock. Um, Can you push looking, it? Looking, looking, looking. I don't want to. It, it's pretty big. <laughs> yeah, these these are also pretty big up here. What uh, about she doesn't she doesn't want a flat one? Is that correct? Uh, I don't think so. I think she's looking for chewed up rock under it. Roger. What yeah. about right in front of the porch? You right see those over the there porch. in the bubble? Like this one? Those are huge. Huge. No, no. Uh, there's like one close to the bumper there. It looks small. You want to poke, poke um, your mechanical oh, telestrator? It's in. <laughs> I think the it's on a telestrator. To the right or left <laughs> of like this? The all the way up top? You have to. Can you camera left? Oh, yeah. I think you got it, Justin. And down. This one? No, those are all, I think, higher. If it's in bubble. How about we hop up there? If you look in Atalanta view, there's like a whole bunch of smaller -y things. Okay. Yeah, let's hop up. Roger. Okay. Uh, oh, wait, Justin, did you want that picture of the coral still? It's okay. I think we actually got it while we were zooming on that other rock. Okay. Sounds good. Sorry. I'm just sorting something Unless out Unless you here. wanted it, Leela. Oh. Yeah. All good. There you go. All right. I like the love tap. That was awesome. Thank that was you. so that good. That was pretty cool. I was like, thank All you. Right. All right. Um, oh, these are such nice rocks. Anything in here? Tickle any Let's fancies? Let's see what we got. Um, a couple of more rounded looking guys there. Mm. Let's see. That might be something. The one above, the, the larger one? Above the small one? This one? Yeah, that might yeah. be something. Okay. Right by the lasers, look like potential candidates. Do you think about that one? Gotta find oh, non, yeah. non Jenga stacked ones. Okay. That one uh, might. I don't know how that great that one is. That looks very Yeah. It is a bit big. Though, huh? Was this one that you pointed out before, the one with the lasers on it now? Yeah. Yeah, that looks like a pretty fair candidate. It looks yeah. pretty bumpy. And that looks Oops, like it's a sorry. good size. All good. No worries. Great. Uh, sorry, I'm on a little bit of a bad perch here. Yeah, this is a, an interesting slope. Uh, all right, I'll just free drive it if you want to grab it. Okay. As soon as I can <laughs> see what I'm doing, <laughs> I will reach in there. Yeah, it's tricky with all this. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. All right, go ahead. Okay. Just re-index. It's going to make the uh, niskin a little tricky to get to oh, with the sediment up in the water. Oh, yeah. We can we can pop up a little bit in the water column when we do the niskin. No problem. Yeah, that sounds like a perfect idea. Okay. So for those of you who are just joining us, we've been we just hit bottom recently, and we're trying to collect two different types of sample Come rock samples. Nice. Ooh, yeah. nice. 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 Something about that. <laughs> it's like the sediment has a little bit of suction on it. Do you want to wash it outside the view? Oh, I dropped oh. it. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, good. Had a bad no, grip we'll look for it. another. How about we pop up a little bit? Yeah. Because okay, the sediment takes a while to settle. Yeah. And we'll go right above it. The first rock was more angular, and we're hoping that there's some original material in there from the lavas I'm so going. that um, they can be. Sure. Help us with aging and geochemistry. Oh, yeah. We got some candidates up here. There's that one. 
Let me see. Uh, no, that looks that looks good. And then maybe what's your what does your joint say? That all looks good. Sometimes it'll say that you're like at the extreme of one of one joint or the other, but you're pretty good in within the middle. Interesting. Well, sh yeah, if you want to show me, well, well uh, uh, sorry about, so what sample you guys want? Uh, no worries. Um, looking at this one, uh, that's, it is potentially big. Right behind the manipulator is another possibility, too. Okay. So I don't know how deep this goes into the sediment. Oh, might be a hidden glacier, but let's try it. Right. Mm -hmm. Nice rock leaning on the porch. <laughs> so now we're trying to find a sample for Dr. Beth Orcutt, and she's looking more at the ferromanganese crust and the microbes that live in and around it. That looks oh yeah, big. okay. Yeah, let's not do that one. Yeah, how about um, we try that one? That one's nice and knobbly. Okay. Right in front of the big tooth right there. Yeah. Right. The center screen. If if it's loose, it may not be. Right below the manip to the yes. back side. Yep. Oh, right there. Yeah. Yep. Indeed. All right. So that one's in place too. From the How looks about? What about this one over here, Val? Right below the wrist. Right below the wrist. Um, so I'll get it more squared up here. Okay. It's pretty much has one laser touching it now. Oh, this one? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what that looks like. There might be a couple others above it, too, if that one's also stuck. Oh, there well, we go. That's very oh. not stuck. It's great. Okay. Maybe try to have you rotate into the vehicle a little bit, and then you change your wrist orientation. It'll help you. Yeah. Good job. Nice. All right. Uh, you want to swing it outboard a bit? That's good there. All right. Go ahead and push on in, please. All right. Uh, okay. We'll go outside of that water there if you want to push it up higher. Great. Is that something that you guys want there, Val? Um, let's see. Could I? Is it possible to get a slightly closer look? Yep. Go ahead and push on it tighter. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's hard Sub to see. Fan. Yeah. It does seem sort of bumpy. But uh, it's I'm not like, oh, the that's super botryoidal. Nice. That uh -huh. might be a little too angular. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, all good. Okay. Um, Kyla, you're still fast feel. Pull wide. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Let's right. see. Uh, what else do we have here? What's going on with me? See what I mean? How to, like, why is my wrist all the way up here? Do you always hold the manip in that position? To no. another spot if I'm you just want. like, I got I stuck to. here and now I live here like this forever. Oh no. Just index it? Kylie, index it? No, I hear you, but I'm just in the sick middle of... Okay. Right. But like every time I, I don't know, I'm just, I have to keep going Oh, like it's that. because, it's because this isn't locked here. So this shouldn't, this shouldn't rotate like that. It's, it's not locked all the way. But I think... Okay. Yeah, so don't pull up on it like that, or else you'll end up where you were before. Raj, Raj, Raj. Okay. Cool. Okay. Okay, what do we like for rocks? Um, 
do we like anything so, uh, here? Uh, yeah, can we hop up a meter or two? Yeah, sure thing. Thanks. Um, yeah. yeah, cause the, you the just stuff leave the look. arm. Yep. Yeah, good just here it. was, Suit tight. it's all stuck. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Oh, there is an Nautilus live bingo. Oh no! Cool for midwater Just and into ocean floor. floor. Nautilus seafloor bingo. Oh yeah, on the website. Um, yep, yeah. under the resource. Answer? Yeah, nautiluslive.org slash resource. Yeah, let's do here. Slash Nautilus dash right seafloor dash bingo. All right. You probably just Google um, it and write Nautilus Seafloor Bingo, right and you probably get it. Oh, that. yeah. What about right underneath where the name's at now? Yeah, I think we're looking at that one, too. Okay. Nice. See, yeah, the silt really isn't oh, helping. Here it is. is it? Okay. Is that it's under uh, education on the Nautilus Live website. Under the game. You want to check it over there? <laughs> Off camera. Yeah, yeah, that's good. How about we just look up a bit here? I know. There it is. You want to push in or no, Roger? Yeah, you guys can push in. I'm just going to get us out of that cloud. Go ahead and push on in there, please. Okay. Okay. You want to center that up a bit? That's good. Man, that's tough. You don't like it. Um, it's okay it's if it's not rowdy. a good sample. Mm. You know? Back row verdict. Um, jury's still out. There's a lot of rocks here. Yeah. To be fair, can you come wide? Man, they're not making it easy for us, are they? Yeah, I think we should keep looking. Okay. Oh. Anything in this viewpoint that looks good to you? While well, Kylie sets that puppy down. We are looking. Like maybe almost by the elbow. Where's uh, that one? That one. No, one by the elbow. The one buried the in the sediment? Uh, it's way far up to the right. It might be out of reach of the nip. Mm. Oh, yeah, this one? one? Oh, seemed kind of bumpy. I don't know. Yeah? That could be a good one. Okay, I'll head up there. Good spot on that. All right. So we're in a pretty rock-rich area right now, which is great for our geology collection. Haven't seen a whole lot of uh, animal life yet, but we hope to. All right. Most sea mounts so make it right next to the rock that's in laser, within the yeah. lasers, so the one to the right. Yeah. Raj. Okay. Yeah, a lot of what we're looking at seems to be those broken pillows, and it's really hard to see if it's gotten botryodal or not. Yeah, because I can see it on the outcrops. Right, right. No, I like know it's big there. boulder has. Some yeah. <laughs> Your yeah, fingers. can we just stay right there? <laughs> yeah, I know, right. right? Justin's on the bio watch right now. <laughs> oh, no, I was just joking about where we have some Yeah, good like, could we sample that section of that boulder? Yeah. Oh, Raj. <laughs> I, think, I think we'd need the drill ship for that. Oh, well, I just uh, picked that one something that's okay. firmly okay. rooted. Into the I sun guess we're going to so. keep poking a little bit. Um, okay, what about ah. the one uh, to the lower right of the lasers? Lower right of the lasers. Yep. Like yeah, we could take we a look, look at, at this one. Yeah. Everybody's dis disappointed that Botryoidal isn't on our bingo card that we found online. You should write that in. Yeah, that should be the yeah. free space in the middle. 
<laughs> there you go. Jeez oh, Louise. Ooh, wow. Yeah, this it was, is it not was angular anymore. on the porch, which is good. But that one was angular, you said? Well, I was just saying that to make you feel better about it falling. I don't know what it looks like. <laughs> I don't feel anything. <laughs> <laughs> you want this one or no? Yeah, just go ahead and pick it up. Nice. Woohoo. Stay in my fingers. Ooh, it's what are we thinking about the stuff. science? That yeah, looks like promising. I'm shake it over here. <laughs> and, uh, I'll just come over here. You put your manipulator arm in, you take your manipulator <laughs> arm out. <laughs> All right. What do we think, science? So let's go ahead and push on in here, please. I am seeing some signs of alteration in part of that rock. Great. Uh, I think that looks good. Roger I think that. I'm seeing a crust on that. Okay. I'm seeing indistinct botryoids. Indistinct botryoids. Because I've decided that you guys' suggestion of botryoid as a single, as a singular, is Poise. good. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're. I, I like that one. Okay. okay. Stand by one. I get Ooh, a set up took for a few that. tries. Yep. Nice yeah. persistence, Kylie. Thank you. I yes. gotta make you do the next sampling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pleasure. Let me catch up on some questions. Uh, are we specifically looking for lava flows, or are most of these areas underwater lava flows? And what are we looking to find? Uh, the rock samples? Yes and yes to the first two questions. Uh, we're looking for both. Um, I should be full rock pack. Let's see. Yeah. Well, let's let's get the sample put away. Yep. All right. Popping out now. Roger. Pick of the litter. Uh, do we want lambda? Oh, uh, sure. Let's start with lambda. Roger. Pick of the lambda. Got it. Pick of the lambda. And open the iris, please. Bit. Thanks, Rip. Looking good. Nice. That looks good. That looks good there. Nice. Hey. Solid drop. Excellent. Coming in. And we're going to take a water sample here, correct? Uh, correct. Yep. Roger. Is in situ okay? Do, do they need to raise up a meter or so because of the mm -hmm. sediment? Yeah, well, well we, can, we can kick off so we don't get that sediment plume behind us if you guys want. Yeah, we should, we should do that just to be absolutely sure. Yeah, sure thing. You can kind of see in their port and starboard cams there that uh, we'll have some breeze glowing. So yeah. I'll have Kylie get set up on the Niskin tab and then uh, I'll pull off the ground. Sounds good. So we're going to take a water sample that goes along with this rock collection using a Niskin bottle, which you should be able to see on satellite P3. Awesome. Just a, a tube that water can flow through and we pull a little loop, and the plungers snap into place, trapping the water inside, and we bring it up to the surface. Great. All right. Hold that there. I'm going to pop up. All right. Look at all that dust cloud. Blech. All right. I am going to move a little bit here that's okay with you guys since we still have all that dust cloud behind us. That works. Great. So it's in roughly the same area. Yeah. All right, we have, we are clear water. All right. I am six meters altitude off the back of Herc, so I'm probably three meters off the front. Does that look good for you guys? Uh, yeah, that looks, yeah, I'm seeing a little bit of sediment on the side. Okay, we can go further. Okay. We'll also have sediment on the vehicle, so if you guys want to it full and proper, we can do a car wash. <laughs> um, what do you think, Lila? I'm not moving there, just fine where it is. Okay. Roger. Okay, I'd prefer we take the sample soon, though, so yeah, the arm is getting a little jumpy. Okay. So I'm going to be uh, over here in fresh water. 
Okay, it's looking clearer on the Niskin side. Yeah. So we, I think we're good to go. All right, go ahead, Kelly. Raj. Popped. Raj. Nice. Sweet. All right, thank you. And we did pass a white fan coral on our right. I don't know if we need to go back or anything like that, but I'll just say that for our annotators later. Thank you. Roger that. All right. Thanks, guys. I think we're good to go here. Raj. Sounds groovy. Suleiman, what's going to be our same, same? 190? We'll make it 200. 200, zero, zero. Zero, zero, Raj. Roger. Nice job, Kylie. Thank you. Yeah, very nice job. 200, zero, zero. go ahead and call on that move. Bridge, this is nav. Bearing 200, zero, zero, 30 meters. Great. So we've had a couple people ask uh, why we're collecting rocks at the bottom of the ocean. Yes, so it sounds like we have a few questions uh, that we're waiting here. Uh, so the first one from a little while ago when we were uh, setting up to take samples was um, what Beth and I are looking for. Uh, uh, I'm curious about the uh, origins of the seamounts and uh, what kind of mantle they may have come from. These are all melts derived directly from melting small amounts of um, uh, the mantle below the crust. Uh, and we're also interested in establishing uh, age determinations on these to figure out when they were active and thus what they might relate to elsewhere in the Pacific. Um, Beth is looking at uh, microbes growing in the rocks. So we're looking for, um, unlike my work, which you know we're looking for the freshest, best preserved material that we, th that we can find, uh, she's looking for stuff that is uh, altered. So we're looking for certain kind of textures and colors for both of these rocks, uh, both these rock samples, just uh, different criteria. And uh, she's uh, trying to get an idea of, uh, you know, what, what the uh, microbes look like, um, uh, not just in, you know, like the rocks in general, but also how they change in response to different depths, different O2 uh, uh, concentrations and, um, uh, get an understanding of, uh, you know, what kind of microbial populations we're finding at seamount to seamount and depth to depth. Uh, I'm not sure if there's anything else to that. Um, let's see, the, uh, uh, the other question was, are we, you know, are things just uh, volcanic or are we looking for volcanic rocks? Uh, the answer to both of those is generally yes. I don't remember the third part to that question. This is just all kind of what we're looking for? Yeah. It's an, if you combine all the questions together, it's basically, Okay. what are we looking for? Why are we looking for them here? Um, well, yeah, I'm looking for rocks so we can understand the origins of these seamounts. And uh, Beth is looking for uh, what microbes are doing in these rocks in various places. Um, since we're down, we are also uh, looking at a number of other objectives, including uh, just kind of surveying uh, how these uh, seamounts um, support different biological uh, communities and populations. Uh, and we can also look at that uh, basically vertically and laterally. So we're looking for changes in those, kind of seeing uh, the distribution and the densities and the proportions of what we see, uh, looking for species that um, may not have been documented. and getting an idea of what um, you know what what the uh, uh, ecosystems within uh, uh, Papa Hanau Mukoikea um, National Monument uh, are looking like we passed a few white branched coral I didn't get a great look at it but hopefully they can just go back wise yeah that last thing I circle I think is just sediment <laughs> so it can be ignored I have a question about uh, whether we encounter m uh, plastic microparticles in the sediments that we're sampling. Um, um, you you want to go first? Oh no, you can go. Um, we do, yeah, and um, you do need a microscope to look at them to see them, so you don't like often see visible plastics. Um, but Taylor Ann, who is uh, was one of our science managers in training, will be coming out this year as a science manager. Um, does microplastics research and has done uh, has looked at has taken some samples and looked at them on the ship um, and found microplastics in them water samples and sediment samples so yes 
was at a talk in Woods Hole years ago. They were saying how the whole microplastic thing was really first brought up by a bunch of high school students doing the Sea Education Association program where they're out on a ship running the, the ship and taking samples and how they kept finding these little colorful bits of plastic in their plankton nets and things like that and started logging it and as far as the person that was giving the, the talk knew uh, they were the first people to start recording incidents of microplastics now it's much more on the forefront of We'll call for another move. Approach this is nav, another move, same step. There's a, another one of those corals right here. Oh, right. They really do. You guys want to take a look oh. at that real quick? Yeah. 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 I think this is the same thing that we've passed a couple times. This looks like a primnoid. Maybe a couple of them. All right, all right. You want to go ahead and push on in, please? Yeah. From Noid. Some little associated bits in there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a single coral, yeah. Well, yeah. I think. From Noids are colonial coral. And there's a stem there. Every one of those little fluffy branches. Uh, that you see each little fluff thing is its own organism, so they live in All right, pull wide, please. a colony. Thank you. Work together to feed. Yep. Pretty long polyps on that one. Mm. What do you think that is, Beth? Or not Beth. A little sea pen there. All right, yeah, a couple our, things there. One of our onshore uh, biologists is suggesting that, uh, that coral we just passed uh, is possibly uh, Romuligorgia militalis. Can we? The type of Chrysogorgid. Can we take a look at these different corals? Because they actually look like they might be. Or are they sea pens, probably? I think two sea, sea pens, pens and one sponge. And one okay. sponge. Okay. What would you guys like to look at? The uh, sea pens or the sponge? How about we look at this one? first. I'm not sure if that's something we've uh, seen before. Oh, a sponge. All right, right. Yeah. yeah, and a couple of those longer That's weird. Pen, yeah. yeah was this something that Steve was interested in? Or, I don't um, know. I was wondering if that looked like black, black coral morphology Asako. I know. <laughs> what? Here at first, but I don't think yeah. that it is. Okay. Yeah, I don't see when like we were the darker skeleton. Ugh. The polyps also look really different. Yeah. Gotcha. All right, so we had that. We had a small sponge in the middle, and then we had probably a similar sea pen on the left. Sponge in the middle. Oh. That one... It's just growing It's out so of the hard sediment? to tell the Rigadrella and Dictialis apart, but yeah, right. It looks like it's on the sediment, which is wild. You want to come partial yeah. away, please? That's good. Thanks for that. Yeah, yep. there's the other one down here in the bottom left. You got that too. Nice. Oh, wow. Yeah. Another one of those. Could we see this, the attachment of that sponge? Yeah, sure. Go ahead and push it in there, please. Ah, okay. Saka says, yeah, it's a hexacoral. That is strange. Right, it one. looks like thready. Oh, come pull, pump I wonder away, if it's attached to substrate okay, underneath. All right, go ahead and push on in there, please. Huh. Yeah, you can well, see the thanks. attachment kind of oh, spread across the Ooh, set of it. Wow. Not pretty. That's interesting. <laughs> Thanks, thanks for the zooms. Uh, yeah. yeah, sorry, that was not terribly pretty. That was but good. Uh -huh. That's okay. Let's get the picture, though. You're too hard on yourself, kid. Here's another little coral, I guess. Oh, yeah. It's at least a stalk. It doesn't look it too It might like just whoa. be a stalk, yeah. What do we yeah. have here? Oh, that looks like a... I was going to say urchin, urchin, but maybe not. Yeah. Well, it looks like yeah. an urchin. Yeah, urchin. It's just a big one. 
How do, why are its spines so long? Yeah, so long. Bumping into things all the time. Oh my gosh, how does it move? <laughs> it's two feet, I think, go yeah, down. It's just like, I feel like it would get stuck on everything. How long are those? 15 centimeters? Uh, something like that. Yeah. Can wow. we get a zoom on that? Oh, and of course, here's a good botch rattle. Good push on there, please. Because <laughs> of course there is. So right there is well, a botch rattle. Yeah, several. Wow. Those are very long. Yeah. I'm going to do a slight bump up. Then, oh my gosh. That is definitely worth a good ca. Uh, you mind if I tilt down? Camera yeah, capture. sure, go ahead. Roger, Roger. All right, I'm going to go look at the guide for that one. That's not in our things to collect. I know, I was <laughs> just <laughs> about to design. look at that. Stinks to stink. Um, we have a couple oh, long spined urchins, but I don't think this one is one of them. Keep moving if you want. Keep moving. I didn't know they came Bruce, in a long This is now another edition. move, Simpson, please. So today I have learned that um, sea urchins come in long editions. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I've only ever seen the short ones, and I thought that was pretty much what they looked like. Uh, here's something. It's a different color, but under the ocean uh, ocean research one, Noah's one, and there's a little ripple pattern. So it's cool. It's under Ooh, the other marks, yeah. Kind of day other, perhaps. Or is what that bioturbation? Uh, maybe ripple marks. Hard to tell. That one looks more primitive. I'm tilted back up, but I am punch pushed in and on on the zoom. Roger that. Thank you. Did that like, was that a sea cucumber that did like a lawnmower pattern right there? Like, I don't oh, know. Oh, you're talking would, about over here? Yeah, because then it gets really random and squiggly right below that. So it doesn't seem like. Yeah, it doesn't seem like, like a true wave more ripple marks. Dipping. I think that's some sort of bioturbation like trackway. Yeah, that's got to be a trackway. We are seeing a lot of holothurian poo around here, yeah. so it could be. That's oh, super yeah. important good to look at. Just partial. Calling it out. Then you want to open the iris a little bit there? Sure. It's also uniform in color. I'm trying to get a little contrast. Oh, red, red, red. Okay, boy. Um, yeah, if we see another one of those uh, kind of C pen looking things on on the rock. Uh, Sako's asked for a zoom on that. Sea pen on the rock? Yeah, I'm not using the correct terminology. It was something we saw on the rock, on a rock a couple of minutes ago. If we see it again, uh, well, we'll um, let you know. I think maybe it was the coral? Oh, yeah. I think There's so. the sediment right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm gonna get a little bit more pushed out so we have more time though. Sure. Yeah. Problem. Did no you catch problem. my bonk? Was that? Did you catch fish? My football bonk, Raj. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I was coming in. I was coming up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is interesting, also. This branching coral. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Weird pattern. Is there something you guys would like to zoom on? We have a few pennies. Do we? Yeah. yeah. If we do, then we want a quick zoom on the branching guy uh, to the left, yeah. Yeah, that guy. Just as a side note, there's about four, three or four sea pens just above that in the center. Yeah. Sediment. So does the structure make this one a primnoid of some sort? That would be my guess, but I don't Go know. I, uh, that last piece. one looked like one to me too, but um, I don't really know the Rum Lagordia okay. militalis that Asako was identifying it as. So it could be that. Can we do a little closer zoom if it's possible? Perfect. You know what that reminds me of, the structure? A cladogram. 
Oh yeah, it totally does. I see it. Great, thank you. Pull away, please. Yeah, another Militalis, she okay. thinks. Uh, thank goodness for impulse control, otherwise the rock box would be full by now. <laughs> I have to look at these Militalis. Oh, those all look so good. Just look at those rocks. <laughs> they, they really do seem <laughs> fairly unaltered, don't they, from the exterior anyways? Uh, Maybe, maybe not. They're just, it's just such good debris. <laughs> <laughs> like clean, clean breaks off the pillows. Yeah, probably thinner manganese crust. So we might be like compared to how things look a little thicker on some of these broken pillows. Um, maybe some, on some of the pillows anyway, it looks like maybe a couple of episodes of various wasting sure. erosion. All right, guys, we're going to do a quick pilot swap. Okie doke. Okay. There's another one of those same potentially Militalis. Yeah. They're not in the guide. I need to get better pictures of these. I like these pillow lavas. Of course, Google has absolutely nothing to respond to that search. It must it? be an, a newer identification. There's one Chrysogorgia question mark in the guide that looks um, uh, or Chrysogorgid. Is there anything mark. in Google Scholar? Let's see. Um, it's one L. Yeah, you got it spelled right. Yeah, I just copied and pasted it. Gotcha. Okay. Um, it's like when you have the I L I, I always have to look twice to make sure if it's like the right number of L's and I's. <laughs> okay. It just like isn't coming back with anything. Okay. Yeah, we've seen more of those C pins. We should get a zoom on that too. There's some sort of whip in the background. That, that has to be a Primnova. That's a Norella. We gotta get ahead. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, not a whip. Ooh, look at that, that thing, thing on the right. Huge. Can we pan we right just, just a little bit while we're moving? Whoa. Oh, oh. Oh. Really tall Ritigorgia, yeah. yeah. Very, yeah. Uh, also sort of sparse, like in some bits. <laughs> Such a dramatic angle. It's a cool landscape. It is. Very. All the stuff with the tall stalks, it seems like they must be able to keep their bodies neutrally buoyant. Otherwise, they'd be fighting gravity the whole time. Is that time. a sea star? Yeah, yeah, that is. Ooh, can we zoom on that guy? Hold on one second. What is he doing? So we're seeing these corals kind of popping weird. All over. Yeah, I don't know if it's Calyptrophora, maybe. Uh, video zoom? Oh yeah, he's just hanging out. Like literally, literally, literally just hanging out. <laughs> <chilling. laughs> okay. Which is what I bet everybody is doing out on the deck right oh now. Oh my so god, it's so topside. nice out. Hot sun yeah. today. We'll probably have to push ahead, guys. I'm gonna go. That's fine. Goodbye. Yeah, let's keep going. Maybe you got pictures. Uh, I tried. We were kind of moving the whole time. Oh. But I, okay. I snapped some. I'm putting My together an album of sea stars, oh, and I don't think we have one of those big ones yet. Should I? Yeah, when we're moving, it's hard to get a still, a okay. still no, blurry shot. No, you can keep it at it, what, what it was and just come up. Oh, yes. Leela, I found a, a few examples of the Militaris in the... Um, oh. oh, yeah? Yeah. In the bigger... Um, yeah, you can try it. That'll oh, yeah. have a larger one, yeah. like four pounds Put floatier. Put under Chrysogorgia. Number 86. Number 86, 87, 88, and 89. Yeah, however, however you want to fly it. Um, if you want to do the, if you want to fly by stick, or if you want to make your Z bias a little bit floaty. Well, we have a question about what elements you find uh, in the lava samples, there, or the rock samples that you're looking at. Um. Honestly, we find most most things on the periodic table, um, except for like the you know like the super heavies, of course. Uh, um, it's uh, the variations in the amounts of them that tells us a lot about um, their origins, and as well um, any variations in uh, different isotopes of the Just same element. So things like uh, yeah, there's a similar pattern there. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so things like 
neodymium, strontium, lead, hafnium, um, argon, uh, tungsten. So people are working on like thallium, magnesium, iron these days. Uh, some of the variations that we get in like different, some of the different masses that naturally occur for each of these elements, we ratios, ratio those together and we can get an idea of um, like a genetic fingerprint, if you will, hmm. of the mantle that they came from. Because there are there, uh, multiple distinct kinds of uh, uh, mantle um, that we can use to uh, uh, trace hot spots through space and time. And we're trying to understand how that oh, those pieces of mantle came about, too. How do you detect elements in this the rock? Do you more spectrometry or something else? Primnoid. Yeah, um, we use a couple of different spectrometric spectrum Look spectrometric oh, methods. There's Whoa. a little bit of size. Oh. Yeah, we're coming up on that slope break, so this must be good real estate for them. That's what we've been looking for. Yeah, so we use a few different kinds of mass spectrometers. Um, Shall we keep moving? Yeah. Approach this yeah. Nav, another move, same step. Uh, for some of the like the major element oxides that question. we do, like uh, elements that are very abundant in these rocks, right. we'll use a technique called X-ray fluorescence. Um, and that uh, uh, is one way of getting uh, chemical information for um, large amounts of things. Uh, for what we call trace elements, or elements that occur in lower abundances, uh, we'll use um, like a plasma mass spectrometer. So we dissolve up some of the sample and uh, run heavily diluted aliquots of that uh, through like a, a single collector um, spectrometer uh, and uh, get abundances of elements that way, uh, which we normalize to uh, these standard solutions whose compositions we know extremely well. And then for isotopes, we use an even more sophisticated kind of mass spectrometer that instead of having one collector, it has uh, a whole array of collectors that we can use to record different mass beams all at the same time, which gives us really precise uh, measurements. Silman, can you um, center up on our nav, please? See cucumber there and yeah. C pen. Can we zoom on the C pen, please? Uh, yes. Saka was asking. Thanks. So yeah, um, being able to collect different isotopes of an element, like say, uh, new, uh, like a form of neodymium that weighs 143 AMU versus a type of neodymium that uh, weighs 144 AMU. If we measure uh, those and, and some of the other isotopes of neodymium um, across zoom? that collector array uh, all at the same time, um, that gives us a really accurate measurement of how much the 143 we have relative to the 140, uh, 144. Uh, because the 143 amounts can vary a little bit depending on uh, how much of its uh, radioactive parent is present also Thanks. in the rock okay. over time, and that gives us a, a fingerprint. So there's a lot more to it than that, but that's that's the basics, uh, the basic kind of uh, thing that we do to get these kinds of information. Oh, well, that's cool. Can we get a quick zoom on this uh, C pen with the interesting top to it, if we have time? Yep. Just one second. No worries. Video zoom. Nice. Check this out. Oh, that's an Umbalula. Umbalula? Yes. Yeah. That's a cool name. I don't think we've seen one of these we yet. We haven't. You're Umbalubable. <laughs> wow. So it's oh, really yeah, dark it right below <laughs> the polyps. Do you have any more zoom? Yeah. Wow. That was a yes. So it, that one is in the NOAA okay, guide. Okay, fine. Forget it. For the Northwestern <laughs> All right. Nice try. Thanks, guys. <laughs> no worries. I wanted to see that dark thing, but I was like, not not ready, not ready for it. <laughs> it was a tricky place to park. It's so steep. Is that a fish Do under there? Or a tunicate? <laughs> a fish or a tunicate? It's a fun Good game. question. It looked like it was sort of see-through, but it was the shape of a fish. What's that over there? Oops, oops. Whoa, there, I didn't another even one of those see you. Corals. Pretty gorgeous. Get out yeah. of here, bud. <laughs> that Sorry. was a surprise. Oh, I only saw top. his stock. He's yeah. very tall. <laughs> it looks just fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another little something over there coral-wise. Just kind of... I think uh, Kylie's going to make up a little bit of Space. pennies and banks, you know what I mean? Yep. Let's do it. Let's get it. 
get up and get forward. I can't see anything. <laughs> That's the weird thing about going uphill, right? It's like, oh, bad. You can't really, without Atalanta, you cannot see what is ahead. What? Well, we got our sonar. <laughs> Well, I mean, I know it's steep, but like, you know, you don't know if you have like a little overhang or something, right? All so right. What is that? Keep going. Yes, please. Sponge over there. Brace this is now. Another wolf, same step. Can I have a quick zoom on that, please? It's beautiful. Yeah. Sorry, I misunderstood who said that. That's okay. Okay, come wide. Excellent. There's a nice big boulder. <laughs> Surprised we don't see anything on it. That is a nice boulder. This is still <laughs> one of my favorite lines from Shrek. <laughs> Some uh, Redigorgia and another sea pen and either the Primnoid or the Militaris probably. I think those are Cortrophora. Oh, and there's a, an Redigorgia. Say it again. Got a couple of nice big fans another here one. Here. Is the porch light on? No. You want it? No, it's just there's a glare on the lens I was trying to figure out. It is not I think that's on. these, the Calyptrophoras. Mm. That does look pretty Although, similar. with the slope, it might make yeah. lighting things easier, but that it, I'll leave that up to you to... Yeah, if you want to try it, that's fine. Okay. Here, I can turn around. I right think here. the glare is just I from a camera it. positioning right. thing, but it's not a big deal. Is this shrimp? What Wait. is this? You turned it on? It's on. Yeah, I think it is a little oh, bit. We got something swimming what over are here. You? What is this? What is it? Is it what I think it is? Uh, I think it's a shrimp. Oh, oh, it's, a sh it's a big it's shrimp. A big shrimp. <laughs> but not a show. Oh my gosh. It's off. huge. Hello. Video zoom. <laughs> wow, look at those big antennae. Yeah. That's kind of beautiful. I bet it picks up some of the tiniest currents with those. Wow. So would those be called swimmerettes? Even though they're mm. so much different than... No idea. Do you think so? I think so. Okay. Unless Come they're... On. Like That's their actual legs. Going. Excuse me, Mr. Shrimp. Mr. The shrimp are always very interesting to zoom in on. And they're very cool, even though they're shrimp. Really mesmerizing, yeah. 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 The way that they swim. Yeah, think, it's pretty captivating. Shrimp might be decapods, and if that's the case, then those were modified legs. But I don't know. Uh, are you I'm saying that they that. might have ten legs and this guy didn't, and therefore he might have had a swimming accident? Um, <laughs> is that what you're saying? That's not what I was saying, but oh. <laughs> I like your story. Oh, Raj. <laughs> it's, it's a very traumatic story. <laughs> it was that. like you're trying to tell me something with science, and I didn't understand the words. <laughs> so decapod just means ten legs. <laughs> that okay. is some steep terrain. Okay, I want to take your bubble real quick. Yes, yes. Yep. Shrimp are included in the decapods, so those are probably modified walking legs. Those long swimmers. They also can have like little swimmerettes underneath the, the tail, like a lobster does. Yeah. Thanks. I was kind of wondering oh, how that. Oh, I know. Thank you. We've got a little crinoid, probably. Uh -huh. Yeah. This light is just playing with my eyes. Video zoom. Hold that. That's yeah, a crinoid. Lovely, lovely. Okay, come on. I'm gonna oh, do speckles all over the rock. Somewhere yeah. else. There was a little anemone or something in the sediment, but I, it was kind of below us, so. I want to take Ooh, your a sponge. bubble one more time if that's Roger. okay. Let's look at the sponge, and then I gotta go again. Dead sponge. 
still seeing such good pillow basalt fragments, but just like no rock for a little while. Because we want to make sure that uh, along this very long dive track that we're doing, um, we have some space for mm -hmm. some collections up at the top, just in case the lithology Ooh. is really different there. It's gross. <laughs> that is a very old sponge. Fuzzy. Okay, come on. That is really hard to balance. So we are at 2,358 meters of depth. Started at about 2,500. We're working our way up to 700. Up a pretty steep slope on one ridge of the King George Seamount, which is a GEO, flat top seamount. Oh, what I do? Let's see here. Temperature is 1.7 degrees Celsius. Sorry, Carolyn. Just above freezing. I can't hear you, but I heard my name. Oh no, I'm taking a bit longer on the gauge check. That's okay. So I can't read it anymore. <laughs> Roger. And our oxygen concentration is dropping as we rise. Yes. Get closer to that oxygen. Oxygen. Press, this is now another move. Same step, please. Yep, we go up. O2 goes down. Another single stem coral. Yep. And a few sea pens scattered around in the sediment. It looks like the primnoids are kind of the dominant thing right now. Yeah, the primnoids that's and those those militalis through the gorgia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Chrysogorgids. I don't so think we need to look at them, but just pointing them out. They kind of blend right in. It's pretty idea. Yeah, those, yeah, uh, like pale pinks. Are they oriented with the current? Is there a current we can feel right now? Here's Get another over those. Not that I can't okay. decipher now. Yeah. The stem without the uh Ah, it's almost too late. Um. You have any interest in a zoom on this? Sure. That sounds like a no, Lila. <laughs> <laughs> you could say no. I don't want it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> More pennies, maybe. <laughs> you can say, ooh, hello, look at you. That's pretty. It's gorgeous. I think our decision delay time is increasing back here. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why. I'm like, meh. Can somebody please change that in the settings? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a tricky slope to look at because everything is so uh, monotone. Yeah. Monotone. It is, it is kind of not the Even most the visually live engaging. things are like pale in color. Yeah. Yeah, we are on the lookout for another one of those uh, sea pens in the sedimentary oh, area. Well, right we to Sorry, we just passed one. Sorry. I know we were no, we were too far away from a couple to get one. What's but that? if we see that's another one, that's the one, one right we'll there. Look. That's a white coral, isn't it? That's I think that's that militaris militalis. Oh. Everything's camouflaged. It's, I'm not even gonna bother zooming on that white thing. It'll blend right into the sand. Also, we'll find something. Find a sea pen. There's something find a purple pen. right there. Is it S? P E N. Sorry, C. S E P. I'm sorry, you're breaking up. <laughs> we knew what you meant. You have no idea. <laughs> you're like, really? I am. Um, is, is, <laughs> is it C P E N or is it. Just kidding. <laughs> or is it P I N? P E N. P E N. P -E -N. Pen, okay, because I wasn't sure if it was like an accent. Ooh, there we go. Is that it? Is that is that one? Yeah. yeah, it's Raj. Oh, we caught that one early. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, there's, there's two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, and an enemy. Ooh. Okay, we are finding things. Uh, okay. Video zoom. A C pin does sound really cool, though. It does. Depending on where in the United States you're from, this is a sea pin. Yeah. Okay. Very true. Dialects do vary quite a bit in the U.S. Can we get a closer zoom, or is that all? Do all you have more? I do. Okay, just go in slow so I can try to... Hey, thank you. Yeah, it's okay. so low contrast with the sediment. I know. 
If you have more, I'd take it all now. Right. Nice. Give me all the zoom you have. Oh, yeah. That's that's as far as we get. That's a good shot. That's a nice shot, yeah. Oh, okay, we'll a little see. jelly thing. See if Asako okay. has any ideas. Come on. Look at the little guy. Oh, I like that. I like that guy. That little jelly thing certainly blends in, doesn't <laughs> that it? That giant anemone. One of our viewers asked uh, yep. if our watch has a theme song. <laughs> uh, Chris, this is not another move, same step. I don't think we do. Do the other ones? No, they don't. Okay. Yeah, no. I mean, we did. Maybe we need one. We we did walk in once for Dan and uh, Paul's watch to be like, welcome to the danger zone. <laughs> <laughs> Look a pillow, b pillow lava that fractured, right at the bottom, maybe. Yes. She's mm -hmm. talking about right I'm here. sorry. Oh yeah, that is a. Sorry, I was typing something. Mm -hmm. Um, that is a nice big pillow structure. The a couple radio of them fracture. Yeah. The yeah. One under the lasers looks like a tube. Yeah, this yeah. has been a beautiful stack of them. Like I'm just sitting back here thinking I want all the rocks, mm -hmm. but I can't have them. No. <laughs> you may not. We we need to budget our rock space. Yes. Val, do we need to have a rock intervention? <laughs> no. No, she's very in control. I, yeah. I can quit anytime I want. <laughs> no, I can't. There's a crino or what is that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like oh, another Ambalula, I think. Oh, oh zoom? yeah. What is it? Oh, on? no, actually, crinoid. it looks like a crinoid. It is a crinoid. Same coloration as those on blue, but like, yeah, what is it attached to? Oh, there, stock I see it. it. There I we see, see it. the coral there. It's oh, very yeah. difficult to see stock. Okay, come on. I think this yeah, dark sediment is really uh, just makes it so much harder. Yeah, I was going to More say pennies. This seems I like uh, save the contrast is uh, making things hard to spot around here. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. So what I'm trying to do for, oh, for y'all is geez. bring up the blacks when we're zoomed in on things, but even then it, it's kind of a marginal uh, yeah. Difference with some of these because they really are pretty much the same color as the as the um, dust here. What is that? Oh, let's find that. That might together. be a rock. I think it's, it's a fine. rock. It's a rock. Oh, it's a rock. It looked like it had a light colored base and it might have been freestanding, but nope, it is a rock. I thought it might have been a crime. That's a cool fracture right there. <laughs> so. It is. He's broken off pillow flows. Does anybody have any expedition highlights so far? Too so many, many to count. Yeah, lots. You should check out the ones that are on Nautilus Life. Yeah. yeah. Probably they cover most of ours. Chrysogorgia and another crinoid. I really enjoyed sleeping about three feet away from a whale shark. Yeah. Oh, wow. Didn't yeah. get to see it, though. <laughs> I didn't yeah, I get to see it, but yeah. I did get to sleep next to it. <laughs> I, I slept through <laughs> the whale great. shark, too. I slept through it as well. Can you imagine if we woke this up whole and looked at the porthole and saw the whale shark? Oh, oh my gosh, can you imagine? <laughs> Our porthole's covered. I don't even, yeah, we don't have one in my room, but I don't even know if I would believe I was awake. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> we all just be playing a prank on you and like putting down a laminated picture of a whale shark in front of your porthole. <laughs> I'll take it. It's a fine. picture of a porthole with a picture <laughs> of a thing. <laughs> <laughs> of a green thing. Yes. <laughs> oh no. Why is there a green thing at the porthole? <laughs> <laughs> no green things yet this dive. One of our viewers is pointing out that the corals that we've seen aren't as colorful as some of the arrays that we've seen in other seamounts. Yeah. yeah. Any guesses as to why? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Science has a lot of unknowns, you know? It's yep. We say, I don't know does. a lot. <laughs> we would, people, like, when we were off the West Coast, would ask, like, why does this canyon have all sea cucumbers, and the other canyon was all sea stars, and the other canyon was all hagfish? And it's like, no idea. Don't know. Is that the first time we're seeing yeah, hemicorallium? Hemicorallium, it looks like. It's just a little guy, too. But a wee one. Yeah, one of the challenges with turning up the black when we're zoomed in, uh, especially in those sedimented areas, is um, I've seen enough of this stuff topside, like on the rocks. There's, it's all literally just like, is like that a really thing pale or is that a fish. I think it's a fish. Raj. Yeah. Yeah, that blurry thing over there. Yes. 
definitely fish. Oh yeah, now I can yeah. see its tail. It made my brain go weird for a second there. What yeah. it does is it gives it a slight outline from the shadows, but um, it's pretty marginal. Yeah, there's just no dark mineral in the silt, which is, um, compared to terrestrial stuff, that is unusual. So and technically challenging. Keep moving? Yeah, let's keep yes, moving. Yes, please. Bridge, this is now another move, same step. I had a question about how the Nautilus is able to map the seafloor with how slow Hercules moves. We're not uh, mapping look. right now. Look, Ooh, look, big look, jelly, big jelly. Mm. Can we zoom in? Yeah, well, hold on. Let me get it in. Like, okay, Ooh. video zoom in. I think this is the alien we've been looking Ooh. for. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. Unidentified flying jelly. Yes. Oh, yes, give us a turn. <laughs> we want to see the jet propulsion. Oh, wow. Thank wow. You. Oh, it's oh, like, wow. Nice. Look at my gastrovascular cavity. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great shot right there. Yeah. I will eat you. Incredible. <laughs> I'm not this beautiful for nothing. Sako says it's a hydro jelly. Oh, okay. Okay. So this will be nice against the black. So it's the Medusa stage or Medusa morphology of a hydroid versus the larval is that nice right? framing um well they can have both polyp and medusa uh life history stages that was cool my wife was trying to explain that, that to me last night that was very cool that was really cool <laughs> another nice there, distant Kelly. little fish thanks. and right oh, nice job nice zoom nice capture thank you Surprise jelly. Close They're enough to keep it in the light and far enough away to keep it out of the thrusters. <laughs> yeah. Very important. Precisely. So um, I have a question for the pilots. Oh, um, sure. How much above the bottom is the ROV? And does the ROV have radar that keeps it consistently above the bottom? What is this? Is this just an anemone? Uh, is that the fuzzy hat thing? It looks just. like an anemone. No hat beard. S sorry, Chris, can you ask that again? I Eight. heard part of it. I'll get um, how far above the the seafloor is the ROV, and is there a, like a radar that helps keep it at that? Video zoom. Uh, <clears throat> so right now, Herx 1.8 meters above the seafloor, and uh, nope, we're flying by all manual. So thanks, Kelly. Okay. Um, there is a feature for like an auto altitude, which is just based off of our Doppler, a DVL in the back of Herc. Um, in really lumpy terrain, you. The Doppler, you might not have all your beams on the C4, which means that you will not get consistent position. Um, anyway, it's more fun to fly manually as well. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Thank also, you. Um, in the water, son sound, sonars are used instead of radars. Oh, yeah, that's a probably the best part to address that. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> To finish answering your question earlier, uh, Christopher, the um, the ROVs don't actually do the mapping. Um, that's uh, on the boat. There, they do. They use sonar uh, to map, and it's a different process that we do uh, at not at the same time as um, the ROVs are deployed. Hmm. Yeah, I know. In my birth in the ship, we Small can hear this there. little do it, do it, like. Oh, that's all, the sub bottom. The that's the sub yes. bottom. Yeah. So there, are, I think actually two. Oh my gosh, it's like almost watch change. Two versions. I know. Of that's time that fast. <laughs> so we have a. Um, we have. Can we look at that? Which yep. one? Okay, but this should have a look at what? The squatty or crabby? Ah. Oh yeah, it looks like a little squat lobster. Well, I have two questions for you. The uh oh, ask them. One, have you ever gotten to study meteorites or lunar material? Looks like a galathioid okay. um, lobster. I have not, but I work in a group that does, so I'm not oh, really yeah. on the possibility that I will. Hmm. Just depends on, uh, you know. Thanks, Kylie. How You're projects welcome. sort out okay. in our lab group. The other uh, question is, what is pillow lava? Okay, so this is a great question because we are looking at it right now. Oh, yeah, see on the left. Yeah, so um, uh, pillow lava are basically these, like, tubes or kind of like 
worms of lava that are up down downhill in a submarine eruption. So where you see the la Sorry. where you see the lasers right here, this is a piece of broken pillow. So is, uh, so is this. So is this. And what happens is the lava um, is is erupting out, and it's in contact with cold seawater while it's erupting. So that outer shell just quenches really quickly and turns into glass. And there's still lava moving behind it in that flow. So everything's still gooey in the tube. Uh, so eventually, the head of the pillow will like break off or break open, and you'll get a new glob of lava that comes out, and it just kind of worms its way downhill like that. Because it's cooling from those edges inward, um, you get uh, development of those radial fractures uh, that intersect with the curved surface of the outside of the, uh, the lava, and you get these kind of wedge-shaped things that, uh, that break off, or sometimes you get entire tubes that break off. So it's... Um, and those are the chunks it, you're looking for, right? Yeah. So those are th so they make this kind of angular, wedge-shaped uh, chunks that I really like. And we've been seeing a lot of those so far this dive, so I'm like, I'm I'm super super thrilled to see that. Cool. But yeah, it's a very common eruption style that you get in uh, sea mounts like this, and uh, I think we see pretty similar kind of stuff at mid-ocean ridges too, and when, when those go off now and again. Am I seeing things that this is purple, or is that just a like a turnover rock? Mm -hmm. That almost looks purple. I almost see that, but I see purple. I see purple as well. I guess well. maybe it's a sea cucumber or something. Oh, yeah, there's something purple there. there. Yeah, it's I think so. Body. We've seen some All pretty, right, I'm pretty not good seeing things. There. Yes, it is. Looks like a yeah. holotherian. Nice yeah. spot. Sometimes the shadowy rock bottoms look exactly and the same. Fish, oh, short eels, everything. A, yeah. Oh, I didn't there get that. Yeah. It's very bright. Is there any another maybe? one behind it? Yeah, these high contrast awesome. areas sometimes play tricks on our eyes, especially because we just spend all of our time looking at these screens and kind of calling out what we see in between uh, in between making jokes. Um, and uh, yeah, sometimes our brains sure. will end up over interpreting those shadows and that contrast. So <laughs> we're trying to be careful about that because sometimes rock shadows look like not rock shadows or vice versa. Sorry. Beat the microphone again. <laughs> Somebody else asked if there are uh, symbiotic relationships at these depths. We definitely have seen some. There is a, a crab that, that walks around with zoanthids on its back. Uh, ROV switching out. Bye bye. And there are tons and tons of microbe host symbiotic interactions. Yep. There are lots of associates that uh, grow on other things. Uh, basket stars tend to grow on other things. You'll often find squat lobsters and brittle stars growing on other living things. So, All right. No problem. Just Once we get up out. into a more biologically rich area, uh, we'll probably see some of those examples pretty quickly. Yeah. All right, so we're in the middle of a watch change. So uh, four to eight is uh, working their way in and uh, uh, kicking us out of here. So um, you'll probably hear voices change, probably a little extra noise in here as we get things set up. Uh, since this is a 24 hour dive, we'll be back in eight hours. You'll in the get our seat. midnight we're watch. Gonna be, uh, yeah, we're gonna be doing the after dark watch. <laughs> Stay tuned, everybody. <laughs> Looks like it's not as sunny outside anymore. I said. Yeah, it's looking a little squally out uh, earlier, and it looks Hi. like that is continuing. Hello. Hi. Check mark. We're going this way. We're going this way. Hill's up to my left. OK. 
kick. Rajoid. Okay. Why is this like this? This is silly. There we go. All right. Uh oh, we clearly have no. We're in a video watch change right now. Uh We'll just get some with this kind of effect. Hills up to my left. Okay, Roger that. Bonk. Okay, what's happening here? Ah, uh, Raj. Clear water here, beautiful. Like, look at that shot, that is dramatic. That is uh, so crisp. Uh, I'm fine with 50, unless science wants otherwise. Why don't we do 30 for now, because we can't wait till there's shift change. Hello Thanks. everybody, this is Come 4 to 8 Delta, Watch. Please. Up on Delta, please. And can I please get a reset? Thank you. I don't believe that one. Yeah, let's do another one. Yeah. Can you check the red book, please, to see which way we're supposed to take that wrap out? I just cannot remember. Yeah, we just didn't do anything about it last dive, which is fine. And I just want to do it now before I forget. Okay, so I think we want to actually recover with negative one, which means I'm going to start that process now, which means I'm going to go this way. Nope, I want you to do nothing. Yeah, Roger. Right hand rule, which I can't show you because the point of the vehicle. Oh, that's a cool jelly down there. Yeah. Didn't they just see a really cool jelly on the last watch? I saw something when I was in the mess. I wonder if that was, I don't know, maybe it was the same one. the Delta come it up It was a very bit cool looking. 20 or so. Sweet. Or you can probably just stay. Stay still and I'll For the do that. viewer wondering, um, we have our pilots that control the um, ROV, and they um, there are cameras on the ROV, and um, to a certain extent, they have control over those cameras. But we also have a video engineer um, in the control van uh, who also helps zoom in and white balance and do all of those things. So it's kind of a team effort, but there are specific people uh, driving the OR ROVs, and then it's sort of a team effort between the pilots and our video engineer for getting the beautiful shots you guys get to see.
Hey, Atlanta. Thanks for yeah. joining us. So. <laughs> Hometown crowd today, huh? They're like, say hello to us. <laughs> hey, guys. ATL represent. Thanks for joining. Do you live in Atlanta, Shelby? I do. I'm okay. from there, yep. That's where I'm going back to. All right. I'm coming down on Delta. We're at Atlanta. Oh, I'll stay here and I'll just... Okay. Okay. Get your, get headed at you. Okay. There you are. This looks steep. Is it steep? Feels it's steep. Very yes. Steep. yes. Feels it feels steep from back here. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm keeping an eye on it. Yeah, it looks like we're scooting up this ridge line a little bit. Hey everybody. Sorry I'm a little late talking to No problem. All good. It's okay, I was doing some evasive maneuvers here anyway, so You've got a lot of planning and figuring out of where all the things need to happen, like these next upcoming up dive. Hey, Lynette, can you update me on what we're doing? Yeah, so uh, we are taking a uh, Small steps so far, um, 30 meter steps. Uh, 200 was the last I called in. Okay. Heading to waypoint two. Waypoint three is kind of in a straight, straight shot. Uh, yep. Below that. So. Okay. And um, sorry, you said slow steps, like 30 meters. Yeah, we've been doing 30 meters. Um, we could possibly do more. Yep. Um, I, I don't think we need to go faster. Okay. Considering how steep it is, and um, especially at these deeper depths, we want to keep our eyes open for animals to uh, make sure we clearly identify them. Okay. Thank you. All right, now the fun of trying to log into the science portal. <laughs> so longer moves won't be yeah. any faster. They'll just be longer. Um, so if you want to keep the same speed, we can do the same with 30 or 50 meter steps because we don't let the ship settle out in between steps. Because of the depth we're at? Uh, we just generally don't do that. We keep the momentum up. So the speed is set by the speed of the move, the transfer speed, which I think is right now 0 0.2 knots. 0 0.2, yes. Yeah. yeah, so if we're going to be changing direction a lot, we keep those moves small. Yep. But if we're going to be going a constant direction, then we can put those moves pretty much whatever we want. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Um, so, yeah, next step can also be 50 meters, and if we just see something sure. we need to look at, we'll ask the ship to slow, stop, yeah, or come back. Stop. Whatever we need to do. Okay. Kay. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, Diane, can you update me on our sample situation? Absolutely. And while we're doing that, can we get a partial on this? Yeah. Go ahead, Steve. Okay, that's just a dead frayed sponge. Mm -hmm. Thanks, you can come wide. Okay. So we've got collected one rock here for you. It's in the forward, forward lambda. And then we have one rock for Val for the geological origins. And we have taken one Niskin in pair with your rock sample. Okay. For microbial analysis. Thanks. Mm -hmm. We got a partial on that coral that's coming into the center frame. You betcha. Go ahead, Steve. It's like an arella. With a hydroid growing on the bottom. And some little pink thing. Can we get a tighter zoom on the pink thing? Yeah. 
Yes, go ahead. Huh. I think that's a ring anemone. Did you call it a ring anemone? Yes. Okay, ring thanks. And I can't seem to get, well, it's hard to focus on. Yeah. Okay, you okay, can thanks. come wide. Such a delicate pink color on that one. Romilogorgia militalis. What's our bearing again? Two zero zero. Thank you. Okay, so not an arella. It's pretty, like, almost lavender. I don't know. My eyes were registering it as lavender. I was looking at it. Hey, well, Beth is looking into that coral. Um, had a viewer who just wondering uh, with eight hours off oh, and Christ four hours okay. on uh, alternating watches, does that mean that we never really get a solid night's sleep. I feel like the average maybe is about six hours sometimes. I don't know everybody. But we don't always have like watches on both sides because mm -hmm. sometimes the the ROVs will come up. So then you do get way more than eight hours sometimes. You yeah. do. Well, we yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. But also the science, I mean, it's and you're in the wet lab after watch sometimes, so that can take a yeah, while. That's yeah, okay. so necessarily. and the mappers are always yeah. The mappers are always <laughs> up. Yeah, so we have our long sleeps. I feel like we call them, which I feel like I've heard a lot of people say six hours is their long sleep. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it depends on what's going on yeah, in between watches. Older. Can we get some partials on those things growing on the rocks there? Yes, we can. And mapping transits. Go ahead, Steve. But we sleep when we can. Or we nap. I slept until 4.30 this morning, actually. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. Lucky. 4.30, wow. huh? Late. Those look like uh, broken Walteria sponges. Thank you. Two of them. Thanks. Yeah. One. It's a huge boulder, though, right there. Yeah. And a field of much smaller things. OK, a living Walteria and an ah, anemone. anemone. Nice columnar looking stuff oh. here. Might be using that term wrong, but to the uneducated eye, looks like columny. And a Chrysogorgia. Very cool rock structure. Does it have to be uh, octagonal to be columnar? Uh, usually hexagonal. Hexa that's what um, I heard. Looks like we have a Chrysogorgia fluorescence here, maybe Metallogorgia. Um, two different kinds. So you can have the pillow basalts also kind of have a mm -hmm. fracturing depending on how big they are. Um, whereas the columnar feature is generally more of an intrusive um, cool, uh, st style of cooling related to the rocks that are intrusive instead of extrusive like these pillow basalts. I don't know if I'm explaining that well. Sorry trying to pay attention to what I'm <laughs> looking at. Um, anyway, so they could, sometimes they resemble each other. So sometimes the, the trick is that, like, do they look like they're in a ring? Hmm. And that usually is like a really big pillow that is fractured as it's cooled. Good snow. Do we know how steep this side of the ridge is? Very. Just very. I don't know if we know the specifics, but it's definitely very steep if you're watching um, Feed One out there. Um, Looks like definitely pretty steep. 40 degrees almost to me, but that's just guessing by eye. Yeah. And then uh, someone's wondering if we've ever seen a rock slide uh, not to my knowledge, I think maybe there was a just a very, very tiny one, I'm to but nothing major.
can we pan right to look at this uh, Eritagorgia? Thank Zoom you. Zoom in, Steve. Yeah, really. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks. It looks Pretty. like there's another Chrysogorgia attached to the other rock. Well, there's a viewer wondering if we've ever explored underwater cave systems with Argus. I, d I would say if, if you guys have, it would have been with Hercules, but I don't know. I'll leave that to maybe Trevor to answer if, if you've ever done that or know somebody who has. Uh, we've looked at tiny caves mm -hmm. off the Channel Islands. Mm. Mainly it was looking for paleo shoreline things, mm -hmm. so we'd sit down and scan uh, little holes in the rock with our sonar to see how deep they were, but we're not going to go inside caves yeah. with Hercules. Yeah, that sounds, sounds like a bad idea. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> sounds a little. We have been under very large. Can overhangs. you pan right, please? Yeah. Oh, that's in my counts. Okay, okay. Oh. it's another Aridogorgia, but with a crinoid attached. Oh yeah, it throws you off. Let's try to camouflage. Thank yeah. you. When they first landed, they were seeing several sea pens, but I haven't seen any yet in the sediment. We still have our shrimp friends. Yeah. Is that something with fish on the right? Top right? I do not see a fish. Yeah. I was. What color was it? Uh, it looked white. Look white? Okay. Don't think I caught that. Just seeing things. <laughs> seeing ghosts. I'm curious that we've seen two forayed yeah. sponge lying down, dead, but yeah. no, nothing living. Hmm. I don't know if they were transported from far away. I saw that too. There was one that we didn't necessarily say out loud, but passed over. here in this little spot so for the viewer who's wondering um, if OET and Nautilus has ever come across uh, any shipwrecks definitely um, Ocean Exploration Trust has been exploring for a long time and although uh, very interested in geology and biology um, archaeology is also a big part of some of the reasons Ocean Exploration Trust goes and explores. And if you go to nautiluslive.org and you go to science and tech and click on archaeology, um, there's a lot of information there um, about shipwrecks and their you know, meaning to cultural history. Can we history. get a partial on this mushroom coral? Go ahead, Steve. And you can see some of the cool things that Ocean Exploration Trust has helped discover um, and look for. So absolutely. Thanks. You can come right. Got some more. Another um, Romilia Gorgia to our right. Uh, Trevor, do you mind coming off bottom a little bit and just panning right and left? I'm curious about this little sediment. Sure. I can see it in Atlanta view, but. You want to just look at this or you want to look all the way to the left? Uh, uh, both, yeah. Fully left, fully right. Here's fully left. Coming at you. Yeah, so for our viewer that was asking how steep this is, so this That's is how steep it is. <laughs> you're getting a sense. <laughs> like, probably more than 45 degrees. Yeah, very steep, both directions. Well, a little, a little less this way, maybe. Yeah, not a, not a lot of animals in sight. Mm -hmm. hmm. So, yeah, you're right, a little steeper 
to our left and our right. Okay, we can keep going the trajectory we were going. Okay. Um, a viewer is wondering, uh, being that this is volcanic rock, do you ever oh, encounter Oh, here's one of those vents? brown rocks. Hold on, Trevor, oh, oh, oh. sorry. Another pubis? Yeah, just out of the frame. If we can just get a partial on this rock right oh, yeah. there. Oh. Go ahead, Zoom. Yeah. Good catch. Okay, yeah. thanks. Looks very similar thanks. to the one we picked up the other night. Yep. And it really does kind of stick out when you think about it from the surrounding area. Okay, sorry, got distracted by the pumice rock. Um, somebody was wondering, do we ever encounter thermal vents since this is volcanic rock? Uh, not here, no. This area does not have hydrothermal activity. These seamounts are very old. Um, we don't know exactly how old, but... Uh, oh, can we get a partial on this sponge, please? Yes, we can. Okay, zoom in there, please. I don't know if we've seen that yet on this dive. Where? Okay, you can come wide. Thanks. I'm not exactly sure what it is. We will keep looking. And can we get a partial on that little pink coral? Just below the lasers. Uh, yeah. If you have time. Yeah. Just below the lasers now? Yes. Correct. A little tiny yeah, okay. light Yeah, go ahead there, Steve. Oh, good eye. Oh, yeah. Okay. Looks like it has three polyps on an axis. Ooh. Nice. A little tiny brittle star next to it. Look how much sediment is coming through the water. What? Wow. I hadn't uh, noticed all right. that. Thank you. Yeah, that's a lot. Another is that dead for Another parade? dead parade, yeah. Hmm. All right, little pale pink. Oh, this little Sea guy. cucumber. Oh, Aww. hello. Yep, we can have a look. Okay, Steve, go ahead. Oh. <laughs> oh, he looks like inflated. Yeah. Yeah. Puffy. Like a little balloon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks. Yes. Uh, so to follow up on that question that was just for Beth, she mentioned that we don't know how old um, these ridges are and these rocks are. So if you're wondering, if for other uh, viewers who may have joined us recently, uh, one of the objectives of the dives that we're doing within Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument is collecting rock samples so that geologists can try to date these ridges. Um, never forget that these are places that have been, never been explored. So. We are learning um, as well, and we hope to, by exploring these places, we hope to know more information um, by collecting these samples. Um, we're also collecting rock samples for microbial analysis, and we're also um, sort of taking biological samples as needed um, with help from our scientists ashore. And we're um, assessing animal diversity. We're not necessarily surveying these ridges. We're not counting every single animal that we see but those that are poorly understood or maybe new uh, are of great interest, so. I think the pink one was a Calyptrophia. Diane, not sure. What's the, this one? Uh, coral? Yeah, like a, the like little pink coral. Can you right? zoom in, please? Oh, I, see. I didn't even see it. Gosh, you have good eyes. How, how did you see that? Oh my <laughs> gosh. It's bright red. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it's neon yellow. <laughs> Ooh. Oh my gosh. Shaky, shaky. Did not see that. All right. Thanks, come wide. All 
Oh yeah, I still didn't figure out the sponge, but whatever. There is another one of those stalks off to the top right. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Uh, can we get a partial on this? Yes. Oh, that one, sure. Oops. Not that I don't like the uh, mushroom coral. Go ahead, zoom there, please. This looks different. Oh, it's a sponge. It's kind of flopped over, looking a little sedimented. Yeah. Okay. Not super yeah. happy. Thanks. And another one there to the left. Yeah, so there's another giant foraid sponge. We can actually get a over. view of the stalk now that's not yeah. against the whiteness. White on white? Yeah, totally. I'll do my best here, Steve. Go ahead. Okay, so two polyps opposing each other and a little hydroid at the bottom. Okay, thanks. So looks like there's a larger fan off in the distance. We don't need to go that way. There's always a larger fan. <laughs> Shrimp. Shrimp. I think we might have just passed a either a sponge hold coral hold fast or a chitin. I couldn't tell which. Another for a so Stock many on of the ground. Those. What's going on? I want to see a live one. Somewhere oh, wow. above us, there must be a live one. <laughs> there must be. We're getting closer, hopefully. Oh, here. This may be it. Here's one now. Oh, oh, whoa. Oh. oh. No. That's not a farad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> something else. <laughs> that we don't know. <laughs> so, um, huh. Is it something that's growing on something else? or? Yeah, that, well, there's a um, hydrozoan growing yeah. on the sponge. Yeah, what are those called? I forget. Do you remember, Diane? I'm working on it. One, it's similar to these. Tetraplora, yes. perhaps, maybe. Yes. Question. Okay. Tetraplora. Cool. I'm sorry, I'm mispronouncing that, as per usual. Yeah, which I guess means three. Makes sense. It's a giant one. Is that the one with the nickname lettuce sponge? Oh, I don't know, Let's but the it might be a lettuce right sponge. This move. Thanks. And the Norella off to the, or is that a primnoid? Yeah. Yep. Mm. As soon as you see them start to hold position, then we can put another one in. Trevor, are you feeling any current down here? Uh, not enough to notice. Okay. What's that? What's yeah, it looks floating? like something just floated above Hello, the light. Oh, yeah, there's something there, yeah. Nice. Goodbye. Looks like a Tina. Yeah, and I'm thinking we could also, whenever we put in the next ship's move, maybe go slightly slower. Yeah, we're just killing the momentum on this one, so yeah, we're going to not keep the momentum up. Okay. A little poof of Chrysogorgia there. Walteria down off the right-hand side. mound. Yeah. Kind of like a spine almost coming yeah. down out of the rock but clearly not enough current to make this mound uh prime real estate like we've seen on other seamounts <laughs> so here's a dead stick just for some current sense okay huh. so pushing you slightly to the east from the west uh slightly to my right so pushing me slightly west oh, i'm Huh? Which way is your orientation? Yes, you're right. Sorry. I'm looking at and my down pack slope rock. too. Okay, there's a Walteria sponge yep. right in the center of the frame. Can we get a partial on the coral with the crinoid? Yeah. And there's another dead fray back there in the back. Yeah, I see a tip back there, you're right. Okay, Stephen, go ahead. Bit. Thank you. 
Shelby, did you ever tell us all about crinoids from the report you made? I talked about it a little bit with Ashton yesterday. Yeah, I did. Oh, but you did? I, just um, a little was, bit. Where was yeah. I? Just give us two facts about crinoids that sure. you learned. Sure. Um, yeah, I think a viewer had actually wondered about just how old they were and how long they had sort of been around, and I found out they're actually like the oldest type of echinoderm. Um, they've been around for a very long time. People really? find them in fossils. Mm -hmm. People find them in fossils very often, um, going dating back past 400 million years. So they have been around for forever. Um, and then I didn't really know that their arms have little tube feet on them, and that's how they sort of pass particles and plankton in the water column to their mouths that huh. are like right in the center, <laughs> sort of like a flower that has that sort yeah. of center part. Um, so that was really cool. They have tube feet. They I do not that. on their little the little pieces that come out of their arms. I guess they have to feed themselves somehow. <laughs> they have to feed themselves somehow for sure. What is that over on the right? Is that just an old holdfast or is that something? Yeah, that's an old holdfast, and then okay. there's a Walteria just above it. It's nice looking Walteria. It's got yeah. a little droop to it though. Yeah. Uh, quickly for the viewer who's wondering about uh, photos, um, there are photo albums on nautiluslive.org, and you can search and filter by like topic. And there's a lot of beautiful photos from uh, past expeditions. There will be some photos from this expedition that will go up, um, and they are open to the public. You can go and look at them um, if you want to use them for a different reason uh, or a professional reason, uh, probably best to reach out to education at oet.org um, to ask questions about using them in a different way. But um, as far as just being publicly accessible, there are lots and lots of pictures and videos available for people to see. There are highlights in the gallery and on the main page. So, Ooh. yes. Uh, yeah, can we get some partials here if we have a moment to sit? Yeah, what are we looking for? All of these things. <laughs> so there's the white Everything. one, the white one, uh, and the bigger, leggier white one. Okay, let's do the right white one first, please. Go ahead. Where do we start? Okay. Huh. Is it possible to get a tighter on this, the the uh, the stock so we can see if? Go ahead. Oh, it's like really stem? white. Oh, what's going on down there? Oh. Okay, this is a bamboo. Thank you. Okay, come on. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder what those little Actually, brown pieces, I can do this right where here. it used to have some additional pieces of its body, but it broke off. Interesting. Let's see if we can, that's pretty far away, but it might be pretty stable, so. Let's see how it goes. Okay. Oh, Steve that is lovely. Yes. That is. Question for you. Someone's um, saying when a partial is asked for, does it mean a zoomed in part of the whole frame? Uh, okay, thanks. The way, I, yeah. uh, the way we've been using partial is just um, zooming in, but not to the end of the lens. Because, you know, I can zoom in quite far. Mm -hmm. uh, but partial zoom, I think, is just something where we get a closer look at something um, without going all the way in the zoom because when we zoom in all the way sometimes if the vehicle's moving it's harder to get a good uh, look at something it's just too close up for yeah. how much we're moving is it harder to focus the closer you are um not particularly okay. uh but the 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 depth of field is shallower mm -hmm. for a lens okay. the longer focal length you have so uh -huh. yeah the more zoom the the less the, sh the smaller the plane is that's in focus if you see like when we're wide, everything kind of looks more in focus. Uh -huh. um, that's like kind of generally how lenses work. Um, the wider they are, the bigger depth of field they have. And then Got it. the more zoom they have or the longer lens they are, the shallower depth of field they have. Makes sense. Cool. Mm -hmm. There's actually a lot of information contained in that word partial. This doesn't just dictate how far we're going to zoom, but also like how much setup is required. Should I be mm. landing and stabilizing, or should we just kind of get a understanding of what this animal is? So one word yeah. does a lot of heavy lifting. 
and sometimes we say a full zoom, uh, but we also, you might hear polyp zoom, which mm -hmm. is basically we try to get steady and zoom in to the end of the lens and get as close a look up as those, at those coral polyps as we can. Can we spend a moment looking that? at whatever this is? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I feel like it's a ray. Just zoom I'm, on I this. I had a feeling like a ray was going to like swim out of the sand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what I had that moment this? too, but what is it? Okay, Steve, go ahead. I think it's a dead sponge. Wow. That has fallen off this stock. Yeah, we'll go for a spicule zoom here. <laughs> spicule zoom. Spicule zoom. Yeah, that. Well, I'm. I haven't changed my mind, so I think that's what it is. Okay, cool. Thank you. Come wide. Thanks. A welcome out of the ocean. I can ocean. believe that. Huh. <laughs> or is it? It's like an island in the sediment. Something, Looks like there's something yeah, big coming yeah, in on the top right. Looks like a kale leaf. <laughs> the lettuce sea, lettuce sponge. Might be another dead one, one below us. It does kind of have the shape of a kale leaf. Yeah, a dead parade. Wow, it's then. very tall. Yeah. Holy moly. Huh. Let's get some still cam shots of that, please. Not sure how well it'll show up with the angle of the camera, but it's a nice shot. Let me know if you'd like me to adjust Hercules lights at all. Yeah, up to you and Steve, I guess. I feel like it has a lot of the qualities of the trade of Pluto, but different. Okay, you can come wide and keep going. Hmm. Yeah, Would I think the speed is working. If we just kill the momentum after every okay. step, that seems to be the right speed. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, ha I'm happier with this. It's also slightly less steep, so there's yeah. less horizontal, vertical, you know, whatever. You yep. know what I'm saying? We're not trying to go <laughs> up and over at the same time. Yeah. The crazy thing is as steep as this is, it looks like if we go east or west at all, then we're just on something much steeper. Is that, am I yeah. reading that right? Yeah. I think so. Because we're on the spot like the, the ridge right now. Right. Ooh. What is down there? Oh. Scary things. Monsters. <laughs> the we great came. beyond. The yeah, great so we're, beyond. we're climbing up a little ridge. <laughs> yeah. Steven's absolutely right. Mm -hmm. But we're actually, uh, it's steep, but Dang, not we're really that steep. on that ridge. Yeah. Yeah, wow. I think I said this before, but if you go hiking in Hawaii, sometimes you're on these ridges. Mm -hmm. and you can see that, like, it's very believable that these were made in the same fashion as those islands. Mm -hmm. There's, that like, knife so cool. edge. That's cool. Yeah. Huh. Guess I need to go hang out in Hawaii to confirm your theory. Yeah, I think you should. <laughs> I, I think, think that's I what that means. I'm pretty research. sure that's what that means. I think research. I'm going to. <laughs> You're already set up for that. I am. <laughs> we haven't All right, seen Steve, it. I think we can. Is this it's going to be far away. What are we going to try? Are we going to try the zoom in? Ooh, this is pretty uh, I can't get closer than that. You can oh. just image it, though. I thought you were t talking about the vertigo shot. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, this is a beautiful just shot. Just a nice backlight. We and like the, the background is like... Yeah, I, I love it when we can see, in the yeah. see uh, when there's nothing directly behind When there's just abyss. Oh. Yeah. Can we get as tight a zoom as possible to see Roger. the branches? That is full zoom. I'm very far away. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's still a great shot. It lights up. One, two, three. It does kind of look like a candelabra. What's that you say, Steve? I said I just turned the lights that out. That brittle oh, star's right. got but one leg, like, reaching all I know, you oh, see it? It's like Can you turn off like down light, please? Yeah. yeah. Turn off down. Got it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, okay, thanks. Him go. Bridge, Can you nav. turn it back on? Okay. 
Can we move five zero meters bearing two zero five, please? Thank you. What, what are you, purple? So that was a bamboo coral, not a candelabra? Or do we know? I'm still trying we're to figure that out. Poking. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we, uh, we're flying unsupported Zoom on in, our please. shift today. Oh, no. Not very supportive. <laughs> what are you, lumpy, lumpy? Oh, what? my goodness. Is this a sea cucumber? Oh, yeah. That oh looks like yeah. a... Its insides are very... You hidden. know the dough dumpling Thanks. soup? The what? The Sorry? dumpling soup that we have on the ship? The one I had today. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that had going. like pork in it. it didn't yeah, have the there dumplings. is a dumpling soup. That looked like a purple dumpling from the soup. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. Was it hey, can you write a note on the red book, please? Yeah. Maybe. We should tilt the port light the, uh, more port aft. Bamboo? Well, do. I don't know that it was a bamboo. Okay. We've got yeah. a bit of a bat signal thing going on there. <laughs> I think it was more like these. Oh, another one of these fissures. Caliopter for Thank you. Yeah. Uh, for the viewer wondering, are crinoids predated upon? Um, <laughs> the only thing that I remember from my bit of research I was doing was that they've been seen like crawling away from sea urchins. So I think I don't think they have maybe a lot, but I think I read that sea urchins might be a predator. I love coming up these steep parts. Yeah, it's totally. so rewarding. Yeah, so yeah, it looks like sea urchins prey on crinoids. Really? Is that interesting? It's crazy to me that in this like big, open, enormous area, two creatures could even come close enough to each other How do to they like find eat each other. Each yeah. other. <laughs> like it seems so easy to avoid getting <laughs> eaten down here. Oh, a Speaking stopped of crinoid. crinoid. Yeah. yeah. Oh. You want to try the vertigo shot, Steve? Yes. Also well, okay, the let's try it. Okay, so we're going to go full zoom first. Yep, and I'll try and keep it centered. Do you, uh. do you want lasers on or off for this? Off, please. Okay, right, So we're full zoom. Oh, yeah. Now you're going to creep. I'm gonna try my best. Oh, I'm not stable. Okay. I get a okay, come, come wide. wide. Come wide. Try this one more time. We do have the time for this. So back away. Beth, are you okay with us messing around with uh, some filming techniques? You know I am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh okay, Steve, I'm good there. Give me a chance to pause and catch up on my animal okay, identification. So okay, here we go. Here. Yeah. One, two, oh, so look at all this stuff in the water. water. Oh, it's really, really hard. <laughs> Vertigo. Wow. Oh, no, uh, I bonked. Oh. I know, Ruined everything. No, nope, that's it. That's gone. Okay. The first oh. step is like, you know, we got we to gotta try. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah can we good. pan left to get this white coral? Yeah, we can. You can turn lasers back on, please. Okay. And Steve, you can zoom. I feel like we're tightrope walking. Like, <laughs> this is so, yeah. like, small. It does feel like that sometimes, kind of edge of your seat. Can we get a tighter zoom on the stems? Full zoom. Okay, thank um, you. Thanks. They're so delicate. They remind me of those like Christmas trees that have been silvered or something, yeah. or like yeah. frozen. I get that feeling as well Silver. sometimes. Frozen yeah, branches. I know what you're talking about. I don't know what that is. I think it's southern it thing. Sounds bad for yeah. the tree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is not good for the tree. They're not living trees, <laughs> probably. <laughs> oh, I have an interesting question that I'm actually wondering about. Uh, oh, that was actually Militalis again. Okay. Uh, someone's wondering, is the current stronger on top of the seamount like winds on a mountain? Ooh. That's, Ooh. I don't know. That's a good question. That's a good question, though. I feel like that question requires a lot of experience. Probably. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Is that your experience, Trevor? <laughs> I'd say yeah, generally, but not always. Yeah. yeah. 
Sometimes you get some whooshing around the bottoms, the bases of them. Yeah. Well, I don't know. This is more of a physical so oceanography question. Again? Yeah. I think, I think it, it has a different species name or genus name. I feel like part of the reason it's windier on mountains is be uh -huh. on top is because it's above the tree line sometimes. And there's oh, no trees on okay. these. The white yeah. one that we you just You don't have yeah. any like buffer. But also if you have a defined amount of fluid moving through defined Thank you. Mm -hmm. physical uh, space, so yeah. wind on a mountain I'll try to commit that or one to memory. ocean through the water, <laughs> you know what I mean, then as the cross-sectional area decreases, the flow rate must increase. Yeah. Cross-sectional what? So imagine how much space you have for the ocean to move like Venturi, over the abyssal plain. Yeah. Oh. And if you focus all that flow over the top of a seamount, mm. it's got to whoosh around to yeah. get around the seamount. Oh, the yeah, because sea I guess the sense. top of the ocean is a bit like a, a roof. Just imagine your thumb over the garden hose, your thumb being the seamount. The water's moving faster over your thumb than it is other places. Mm. Like a wind tunnel. Yeah, like that, yeah. What kind of, does anyone know what kind of temperature gradients we've been seeing down at these depths, like just of the ocean water itself? Is yes. it pretty stable, or has it does it change a lot for us? Uh, yesterday's dive, since we were shallower, it was significantly warmer. Um, I can look at it right now and tell you what it is. But well, we're talking like still single digit Celsius, I assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah we were. Yeah, I think just like once you get below the thermocline. Uh, which is a couple hundred meters, it stays pretty stable. I was going to ask okay. about that. Is it a pretty sharp thermocline, or is it a more gradual? Um, it's hard to tell on this graph. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'd have to replot Grafana data, which right. doesn't yeah. show depth in it. Yeah, uh, I guess you have to do CTD versus depth, not versus time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It does look like it stays sort of around 2 degrees Celsius mm -hmm. for the most part. Okay. So that white one, again, is uh, looks like the type of Chrysogorgia. And here is called Pleurogorgia milita militaris. That's the militaris one? I think so. Oh, I thought the militaris only came out one side. Oh, it does only come out one side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Chris was saying you could remember it because it's like the people in the military standing at attention. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah, the militaris. <laughs> I like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. A couple of viewers are also agreeing, so that's great. Thanks, everybody. This is a new one I'm trying to commit to memory. I'm gonna Bersinged star. Another Walteria in the background that doesn't look too great. Yeah. They don't like it down here. Or I guess they do enough to show up, but. Can I describe it as a ailing Walteria? Yeah. <laughs> You can describe it however you like, Diane. <laughs> <laughs> That's a soft yes. Soft, soft, soft yes. yes. What happened to our sea pens? Where did they go? It's true. I know when we usually were seeing them, they somewhat blended in, but I feel like we were still able to see them a little bit, even if they are blending. Yeah. What's this little gaffer here? Hmm. I say as I don't center it up. Here we go. <laughs> mm -hmm. This one. Steve, can you zoom in, please? That's not a sea pen. No, no, no. It sure is small. Okay, thanks. Look at this dangle boy. Oh. Hmm. Can we get a partial on that so I can see if it's a bamboo or not? Yeah. Go ahead, see. Hmm. Okay, 
I'm not seeing any note notes. I don't, yeah. Are yeah. those the like sort of little black pieces? Yeah, the black ranger yeah, notes. I don't see any of those. Thanks. Okay, thank you. No notes. <laughs> no notes. <laughs> right. Uh, pilots, I have a two for one or two for ROV question for you. Okay. Um, folks are just wondering uh, do you all have a favorite maneuver? that you do with the ROVs and how long is the tether that's connected to the ROVs? <laughs> Favorite maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> choosing from the range of maneuvers that <laughs> I could do. <laughs> up, down, or to the side. I have to say I really like um, up. up <laughs> <laughs> that counts. You can say arm you maneuvers. Can. Oh, I like That's arm things. Yeah. yeah. You can say on her too. You've been picking up things. <laughs> There's a little sponge on the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> I like, yeah, I like doing the arm. The arm is pretty fun. Yes. Picking up rocks and actually like closing the jaws around something. That's oh. very satisfying. Okay, <laughs> I'd like to mess around with a different force grips on that. Sometime. All right. <laughs> well, this is something you don't see every day, which is a sponge in the sediment. Yeah, what the heck's yeah, going on there? Yeah, that's true. Is the sediment here super sponge? shallow, and it may be attached, and then sediment collected around it? Don't know. Hmm. Um, okay, come wide, please. I think that long whip that we were seeing was a primnoid, not a bamboo coral. Oh, here might be a sea pen. Uh, um, Bellala, right where? next left of your lasers. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Go ahead, that's zoom. the one we saw yesterday in some sediment fields. Yep, there's two of them. Bellala. Yep, there's one here and one to the top right. Top right. Ooh, Look at that. Bellala. All right. So two. Umbalula. Umbalula sea pens. Thank you. How do you spell Umbalula? <laughs> U-M-B-E-L-L-U-L-A. U-M-B-E-L-L-U-L-A. Umbalula. Umbalula. All I see is the phonetic spelling in my head, like Lula. Spelled like umbilical? Or no, is that with an E? Oh. Oh, I don't know. I feel like I have to remember it by doing the umbrella la. Can we have another partial on this whip? Yes, we can. Umbrella. That is kind of like an umbrella. Like one that's got blown inside please. out. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The yeah. umbrella la that got blown out. <laughs> Zoom in a little tighter. Is that the uh, same from Noah? Yeah, I think this is the can yeah. Candidella Gigantia. Oh, look at the tiny hole fast. Okay, thanks. thanks. And uh, just to our left is, I think, a sea cucumber. To our left. Oh, Bottom no, of the lasers. Oh, yeah. oh, <gasps> go, oh go, 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 go! Moving. Whoa. Whoa. I've never seen it move. This is amazing. Oh, that's cool. Oh, my gosh. Is this... I'm on bottom, now. Steve. That's all. I think this is a sea pig. pig. This is a sea pig. Sea pig. Swimming. <gasps> it's oh. Oh. This is so Swimming. magical. I have never seen it. Hey, wait, guys, guys. <laughs> let the I'm pilot flipping out. I'm talk. flipping out. I'm okay, flipping out. Okay, you got it. Oh, my gosh. Good job, Trevor. <laughs> oh. Nice. Oh my you gosh, this is amazing. It's doing the wave. <laughs> it's doing the worm. It's doing the worm. It's doing the worm. <laughs> totally doing the worm. Oh, that is not We need graceful. to come up with a new dance move called the sea pig. <laughs> okay. And that needs to be part of. <laughs> this oh needs our choreography gosh. for the yes. end of the cruise. Annabelle, are you on it? I'm all over <laughs> it. <laughs> wow, this look at that. Not how I expected that to make swim. <laughs> Me <my> neither. <laughs> Drop that the was mic. delightful. That was mm -hmm. fantastic. I enjoyed you all witnessing that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. That was, that was my favorite part. <laughs> I have seen it before. Wow, my heart is <laughs> fluttering. <laughs> Does it feel like a sea pig? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my heart is There's doing the worm in sea pig. Yep. <laughs> oh, I caught it just in time. My work here is done. To the you pan left, please, to see uh, that um, uh, Iridogorgia. Yeah. No. There's one now. I yep. still need to see a crinoid swim, and then oh I'll be yeah. done. yeah. Well, no, I'm not done, because <laughs> I need this iridogorgia in my life. 
I still need to see a crinoid swim, so I'm not done either. Oh, yeah. No. No. What's that white thing? I think this is a Ritidogorgia bella. Yep, there's a little sponge attached to that rock, I believe. Couldn't get an ID on it. It's okay. We can keep going. The tether is 30 meters long. Oh, good. Wow. <laughs> good job, everybody. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, right, when we got around. two questions at one time. <laughs> what was your favorite move, Trevor? I didn't say it yet, but it's the reverse move? Suzuki. Oh, yeah. Well, now you have to explain. <laughs> I'll leave that up to viewers at home. <laughs> <laughs> the reverse Suzuki. And people are wondering how long is the tether. Did we already answer that? It Can we get a partial on this little wisp oh, of a thing? Oh, good eye, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Um, it's like a yeah, ghost. Yeah, I'm going to land. It's too I far think away. it's a Walteria, but it's so Whoopsies. different than what I'm expecting. Okay, Steve, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Walteria. An ailing Walteria. Ailing Walteria. <laughs> oh. Okay, right, thanks. thanks. We can come on. What color are they when they're not ailing again? Are they They're wider? like a nice bright white. Oh, okay. Yeah. My Looks eyes a little feel like see -through. they're ailing. Yeah. <laughs> I, can, I don't know how no. you see those. <laughs> Almost translucent. Oh, and for Crinoid Fanatics, a photo album has just been published under gallery, so you can go and learn some more if you want. So the cool ones that we've seen so far. I think my favorite was the red one. I know, it was just so striking. I love the neon yellow ones, though. Have we been seeing these fish on this dive fish. so far? Mm -hmm. I think they saw one fish earlier. Okay, well, let's zoom on the second fish, please. Second fish. Second fish eye. <laughs> wow, look at it go. <laughs> um, so, so I think before <laughs> they saw Snaffabrank, and I think that's what this is also. I'm not 100% sure. It's no, slow. yes, no, eel. Look at those war wounds in the back. Mm. Okay, thank you. Crinoid off to the right. Bridge nav. Can we have another step five zero meters bearing two zero five? Thank you. Fol folks are saying maybe that was a cutthroat eel. I'm not yeah. sure though. Same same thing. Got it. Thank you. Is that a sea star prey day? Oh yep. We're gonna have to have a look at that. Again. Yeah. Oops. Okay, away. Steve, go ahead. <laughs> nom nom. <laughs> I just love to see them wrapped. Okay. Yeah. He's been working on this for a while. <laughs> <it looks laughs> yeah. Like. yeah. 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 Kidding. Disappear Easter like dinner. That. You have to like jump from like piece to piece. <laughs> Must be difficult. Yeah, I wonder. Do they jump or do they right. navigate back to the towards the base? Or oh how does yeah, that that's work? true. Do they just kind of like go up and go out and then go up and then go out, or do they like hop, hop, hop? I also wonder if they're ever heavy enough that they break off a branch. We saw yesterday, do you remember that one that was like sort of drooping off of mm -hmm. uh, a okay. coral? It was such a small coral, but maybe it was like the tastiest one in the sea. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was hanging off like an oversized Christmas ornament that was like <laughs> like coming off. I think he was mad about the portion size. Like maybe. I paid $50 and about all about the got was this tiny Oh, the size of a shrimp. The fancier the meal, the tinier the plate. <laughs> <laughs> that shrimp is not how that works. Can we have a partial on the shrimp? Yeah, for sure. Go ahead. Mm. Oh, and a fish sliding in the screen left. Look at the legs. Granddaddy long leg shrimp. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> you better know it, Stephen. Look at the shimmering yeah. antlers, whatever you call them. Antlers. <laughs> Antenna. I don't like the legs on this Can we one. get a closer <laughs> zoom on like the antenna? 
I can't. Are they bioluminescing? They sure do look Whoa. like they're look doing at something. This. Wow. Or is it it's just like a party might, on its head. It might just be like a it's filament. Our, like yeah, it's our lights. Light, yeah. yeah. I wonder if it has like some sort of cilia right there, and that's what we're catching. It looks like yeah. something is coming out. Very cool, though. I don't know. It kind of looks like it's luminescing, but I think it's reflection. Uh, yeah, I think it's just reflection. We could tell by turning the lights off. Ooh. I don't know if we can pick it up. <laughs> if we could pick it up with the lights on, we'd pick it up with the lights off. Okay, let's try it. That's right. Okay, go Ooh. ahead, Ashton, kill okay, all the lights. killing all <gasps> the lights. Oh. Oh. I'd say it's uh, reflecting back. Yeah, you can turn the lights yeah. back on. Okay. So that was a good like test. <laughs> thanks for letting us <laughs> test yeah, it out, Thanks Trevor. for right. <laughs> that was a fun experiment. Yeah. What's going on I with that rock there? So that's hmm. a big pillow, right, on the left? Yeah, it's a pillow. Okay. Looks like we have another umbellula over here. Mm -hmm. A little sandy part. And here's this, another one of those sponges, which I'm not sure what it is. And yeah, coming into the center of the frame. You want another look at it? Yeah, please. Sure. Okay, I'm stable there. Almost looks like a rose. It's or got a, a tulip underneath it. It does have. It like, yeah, I think that's what it is. <laughs> uh, oh, that porch light, oh, please. Funny. I think this is a euplectelid. Yes. Porch light uh -huh. going on. Porch light on. Better or worse? I kind of like that more. Want me to turn off one of the back ones? I don't know. Mid. Like messy inside. Mid? Is that normal Ooh, for the nice. and little and feathers uppers or turn arms uppers off too? Under there. there? Oh, it's a crinoid. Oh, I was like, is there a crinoid like somewhere under there? Because I've never seen Maybe a even turn down sponge off. like this. Yeah, let's see. Let's oh, wow. Look at the sediment trails behind it. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. I love it. Something was That's here. That's nice. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Come on. You can leave the lights off for That's just a, a sec. Let's yeah, just let's see what see. it looks like. Yeah. This is just porch light. Oh. Ugh. Actually, this is... Oh, it's oh, yeah. neat, but it's not that good. And starboard and aft porch lights. Yeah. It's good for looking at the texture of uh, sediment, for sure. Yeah, yeah, right. If we ever want to look for at um, ripples again, yeah, this is the way to do it. Yeah, yeah. okay, you can turn on the other lights. Nice. Basically, the opposite of what we have now, please. Okay, we're going to switch out in the video chair. Switching out in video. Okay. Trevor, can you pan right just a little bit? The texture of these rocks looks a bit different. Yeah, it does. It's like a ropey-ish look. Further uh -huh. right or this one? No, you got it right in the center of the frame and center top. We had a video watch change, so I'll just get physically close. The old manual zoom. <laughs> hmm. Do you want a yeah, this looks more eyes? like a, it's a different type of flow All right, pattern. I should move along Thanks. now. Justin here in for Annabelle for a little while while she gets dinner. Hi, Justin. Welcome, Justin. Hi. You guys, I feel like my heart is so fat between that <laughs> sponge <laughs> and that <laughs> sea pig swimming. It's going to take like a lot for something to top the swimming sea pig for me during this I mean, dive. there's been a highlight on every single dive, <laughs> but like so far on this dive, and also that sponge with the crinoid just a moment ago. It was, yeah. Yeah, if it were for Lou for a second, I was like, I'm sorry. What? It what did they? It's tubular there, doesn't it? That rock. Yeah. I really like that crinoid hiding under the sponge. That's that was really what yeah. I mean. Yeah. Like, just Why that whole. Hey, Trevor. Hello. I was I'm going to switch off like of auto iris so it might Thank dramatically you. change for a second. Cool. Sounds like y'all saw some amazing things. Well, that was like very random and unexpected and fantastic. Did you guys ever make those drip castles at the beach when you were a kid where you'd like pick up sort of watery sand and you're like, yes, you know, yeah. like absolutely. Make oh, yeah. That's what this rock looks <laughs> like. It is. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's a good um, comparison. I never did it with lava, though. My hands weren't thick yeah. enough. Yeah, you got to wear better mitts for that. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. yeah, good thinking. Maybe, uh, 
<laughs> uh, we're starting to switch out for dinner a little bit, so you'll start to hear some other familiar voices. But we'll be back. Yeah. Oh, did that photo album just launch? A bouquet of deep sea lilies. Oh, cool. Back on the science party. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome, Val, Justin, Chris. It is Ukrainian Easter. And Here so on the back row. The Hawaiian liaisons, cultural liaisons, decorated the mess hall. Oh, it looks so good. A nice Says Easter it. celebration ah. tonight. Who knew there was crepe paper here? Yes, it's the Man, biggest where they been holiday that? of the year in Orthodox we'll culture, probably never know. I believe. Oh, is that so, Ashton? Thanks for that. Yeah. So, they were telling me as I was switching out that they saw a sea pig. Yeah, it was really swimming. cool. You saw that nice. too, don't you? It was really swimming cool. sea pig. Swimming. Sea yeah. pig. It was like it's gonna be a nice dancing. highlight. Yeah. It was a really good highlight. It was a, nice. it was a personal highlight. So, uh, one of our viewers asked, uh, do the... Do, do yeah. What kind of pranks do the Nautilus crew do to each other? <laughs> I thought we might have some people well. on board that might. <laughs> oh my gosh! Now that you mention. Oh. oh wow! What's this? What is this? Hello, oh. Mystery Sea Cucumber. <gasps> is it? Oh, oh it's another please one. be a chicken. Headless chicken, it is. Yeah. Go ahead and push on in there a little. He's gonna push on into us actually. Uh oh. oh Just wow. kidding. Oh my gosh. It reminds there. me a little bit of the guys we'd see in the Lao Basin sometimes, <laughs> but uh, different. Okay. We. It's like <laughs> I love them. a sea pig bonanza today. That's cool. That's great. Interesting. See, I, I love the color on this. It's like they take themselves so seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Diane and I pulled kind of a stupid one on Leela. Two zero five, Rich. Oh, you're talking about pranks? Yeah. Yeah, I know. It was funny. It was kind of a nerd, nerd, nerd prank. From one nerd to another. Yep. <laughs> That's the best kind of prank. It is. We had a good concept for one last night, but the execution was a little bamboozled. You know, yeah, she said she work. was a little scared, really? actually. Yeah. Yes. So <laughs> she said she didn't fall for it, but then she started to play tricks on herself. So we kind of got oh. her. When the ship rocks, there's a chair that moves in the lab, and it kind of looks like someone's sitting in it. Oh. We could see the wet lab on camera. And so we radioed into the wet lab to tell Annabelle, Annabelle, who's in there with you? We don't recognize him. <laughs> <laughs> we obviously had a little too much spare time last night. <laughs> Annabelle's pretty tough. And, she uh, is. Resilient, so. She just answered and said, there's no one here. <laughs> <But> <laughs> yeah. Either that or you guys are really seriously sleep deprived. <laughs> a little, little column A, a little column B. It's going to be 12 to 4 watching.